We are basketball. Team is everything. We fight till the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and the playoff champions. We've seen this in two decades. A new era, a fresh start, a total reset. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are British basketball. Can't stop me, I'm a beatable, I'm a beatable, I'm a beatable. I'm beatable. Every time you want to clash, you win the winner's kicking through the door. I am a beatable. Chances running out of stock, and we're running out the clock. I fail once, never stop. I am a beatable. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. Well, it all starts here. Welcome to a brand new season for the British Basketball League. It's the Newcastle Eagles against the Sheffield Sharks. Game number one of well over 200 matches between now and the end of May. And we are so excited to bring you the very best of this incredible game. And tonight we're at the Virtue Motors Arena in Newcastle. And last season, the Sharks came out on top. They won three out of the four matchups. And both teams, they've really beefed up their rosters in the off season. And they're hoping to start this season with a bang. And these are two teams that have been there and they've done that. The Eagles have done it again. The most dominant team in the history of British basketball. And Sheffield Sharks can celebrate because they are the 2016 BBL Playoff Final. Well, 42 titles between the two clubs. All that success from both of those teams it means that we need the success in the studio today. And we're going to have that. Big hitters out there it means big hitters in here. Obi Soko, former London Lion, and of course, head coach of the Leicester Riders is Rob Paternostro. Lovely to have you both here. And for you, Rob, it's, you know, the first day nerves, game day one. You've been coaching for some time now. You still get nervous and you excited about this? Oh, yeah. It's uh, definitely nerve wracking. I think the night before is where you really <laughs> feel it. Trouble sleeping. Everybody would be really fired up to get off on the right. Put. Absolutely. And for tonight, though, the two teams that we've got playing OV, it's going to be a good matchup, isn't it? It's going to be a big time matchup. You know, you're going to see two different styles. You're going to see a lot of talent uh, from a Newcastle side. And then you're going to see a Sheffield side that I think has a lot of returners, which brings a different dynamic in itself. Completely different dynamic. So we'll see how it goes. Now, former Newcastle Eagle Drew Lasker, he's going to be our main man on the court, as he will be all season. And what's the Eagles game plan tonight, Drew? Jeanette, someone called Crime Stoppers because the Newcastle Eagles have brought in a two-time felon, Larry Austin Jr., as he's the league's defensive steals leader over the last two years. And tonight, you'll see him do it in multiple ways. You'll see him on the ball where he's really aggressive, looking to pick the pockets and add to his rap sheet. But off the ball is where he's at his best, looking to shoot the gap and get off to the races. But on the other side of the ball, come with me, cameraman, real quick. Right here, right here in front, we got Taj Green, box office. And yeah, we've seen him go viral. But he's more than just that. He has substance. He can get it down low, but he can stretch the floor, create space for these dynamic guards. Look for both of these guys to get busy all night long. Amazing. Well, thanks, you. We'll be hearing from you again shortly. And one of the biggest bits of transfer news this summer was Taj Green's move from the Giants to the Eagles. And Obi, it's pretty easy to see why he is incredible, isn't he? I mean, he's a big-time talent, definitely an MVP caliber player. I matched up with him last season. Um, and, you know, it, it was a big-time matchup every time. You know, he's a huge athlete. He plays both sides of the floor, and, and he gets the fans involved. You know, he's a guy that's going to um, excite his teammates. He's going to excite the crowd that comes down there. And, you know, he's, he's not going to leave you disappointed. 
He's not. And I guess if you're you're trying to make an impact here, someone like Taj Green there, Rob, what's he going to bring to this kind of team? Well, he has so much talent. He flies in the air, as you see. But what I like about him the best is he was a competitor last year on a team that wasn't at the top of the table. Had to play a lot of minutes. I feel like this year he'll have to play less minutes, but I think he'll be have more energy and he'll be more ready to go this season. Absolutely. And for, I guess for, for the British basketball fans, they'll be looking at this and thinking, is he going to be part of the MVP conversation? Is that a task that's too much for him? Well, it's only his second professional year, isn't it? What do you think? Uh, I feel like he has the talent too. He has the talent too, but like Rob kind of alluded to just a, a little bit before, he's playing on a different team this year, different makeup, uh, a different bunch of guys, and, and there is a lot of talent on that Newcastle t on that Newcastle side. Sorry. Mm. Um, so I feel like him finding his feet uh, in his new locker room is going to be a big part to his success. Absolutely. Another big part to his success and the team's success is experience. And someone like Darius Defoe, we've been watching him for, for years now, but he's out. He's a bit injured here. It's going to take him a little bit of time to get back. How important is he to that team now? Well, look, he's been playing so long. I played against him, so he's been <laughs> around forever. But he's such a great leader on and off the court. Tough injury there, fluky kind of injury. But he's tough. He's the kind of guy that I think will be back soon. But they'll miss him. But one thing about Darius, if he's not playing, he's still an important factor for yeah. their team because he's a real leader on the sideline. Absolutely, and there he is on the sidelines. And that is important, isn't it? Just his presence alone is something for that team. I mean, he's been around, he's been around. So, you know, Mark is going to depend on him heavily um, when he's trying to implement uh, a lot of the things that they're going to try and do this season and his voice echoing the coach's voice is going to be very, very important for this Newcastle and, side. And we can see it here. Look at those records there. He's still active. You know, he's very much into his late 30s. But Rob, those are some stats. Amazing. 27 titles. That's an incredible stat. And again, with all the new players, they're yeah. going to need him to be a real leader in the locker room. OK, well, let's see how Newcastle Eagles are thinking about starting this up. This is going to be their starting five for this evening. When you look at this, Ovi, any surprises there for you? Uh, I feel like they've gone with uh, a much smaller lineup. Obviously, we've spoken about Green a lot. Uh, he's definitely going to be heavily featured, but he'll be coming off the bench tonight. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting lineup I think they've gone with. Okay, Taj Green will be looking to see, and we are less than eight minutes from a tip off of the first game of the season, and we'll be back after this. Well, welcome back. We are just over five minutes away from tip-off. It's the Newcastle Eagles against the Sheffield Sharks. It's time to go down to Drew again. He's in the middle of the Sharks' warm-up. Drew. Historically, the Sharks' offense has been like the tortoise, but that's why they brought back the hair right here. Jalen Pipkins, because he has bunts, bunnies, he got major bounce, one of the most athletic players in the league. And when the shot clock gets low, look for the ball to be in his hands because he's a shot creator. And when the ball is in his hands, this guy right here, we got him right here, Jordan Rattino, one of the best in our league at playing without the ball in his hands. So as soon as that defender turns his head, look for Rattino to go to his favorite, the back cut, to create easy opportunities. And when his defender helps in the lane, that's when he's at his best, as he's a phenomenal three-point shooter. Thank you, Drew. You know, I'm surprised that Drew's not in there, you know, with his kit on, ready to go. He's, he's loving it. But he spoke about Jalen Pipkins. This is somebody, again, another player we're going to be watching quite closely this season. But what makes him so good? Well, he's so athletic, so fast. He was really a highlight real player last year for them. I think that when you look at guys that can get out in the open floor and finish with authority, well, he can, as you see here against the Riders there. And he is a guy that really turned the team around, I would say, the injection of speed and athleticism into that lineup the second half of the year. He was a major contributor to them in their playoff push at the end of the season. And it is that level of impact that they need, isn't it, the Sheffield Sharks, to really be able to actually, you know, be up there and show that they can contest against some of these teams. I mean, he's a guy that can play without the ball. He's a downhill guard, but um, he makes energy plays, like Coach said. He plays in transition a lot of the time. But these are all plays that don't necessarily require the play to revolve around him, which is always a plus for any coach when they have guys who play hard on both sides of the floor, but they don't necessarily need the, the ball in their hands to be effective. And another player that will be alongside Pipkins is Jordan Rettino. And another one, again, somebody had a lot of court time last season. And there was a reason for it, Rob. 
Yeah, Coach Lyons trusts him. He's the type of guy that doesn't make many mistakes on offense and definitely doesn't make many mistakes on defense. They've been a really good defensive team over the last few years, and Rutinio has been a major part of that. Again, another guy that doesn't need a lot of the ball to be effective, but finds his way throughout the game to make an impact. And when you think about this team now, they're up against the Newcastle Eagles team, super ambitious. The Newcastle Eagles team that also got Europe in mind as well. So they're going to have to really have a starting five lineup that, that, that makes sense for them, Ovi. I mean, I feel like these guys have a lot of returners, which is obviously going to be a favour to them and, and be big for, for Coach Lions. Um, they're just going to be, you know, trying to get back to old ways and, and continue from where they left off last season. OK, and this is that starting five there. Rob, any, any, any surprises there for you? Well, no, Bennett Cook in the starting lineup. He was their starting center last year. Jabril Adekoya goes to the five. Played for me last season. Great player, very versatile, ready to step in at any time. OK, well, Drew, he has been very busy down there courtside. And a short time ago, he caught up with both coaches. Coach, we are back. How do you feel about the new season? Optimistic, excited. Uh, yeah, ready to go. I think, you know, it felt like a long summer, um, a busy summer for sure. But yeah, myself and the group, you know, it's been a good three, four weeks of preseason and yeah, excited, ready to go. What are your expectations for the Sharks this season? You know, top four finish, fight for silverware. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a new league and everyone's trying to punch and, and play a little bit better, have a stronger side. But I have confidence what we'll do this season. You know, we've tried to have a really meaningful preseason on and off the floor. You know, really tried to do a lot of, um, yeah, meaningful, purposeful activities. We've tried to build an identity on the floor of how we want to play, how we think we can be successful in this league. And yeah, like I say, it's been, it, it's felt like a long preseason, but one that we kind of wanted and needed as a club and excited the first games here. What's your thoughts on this new retool, Newcastle Eagles? Uh, well, it seems good on paper. Uh, a lot of scoring, uh, fast, dynamic, and transition. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to do, do a good job keeping out of transition and rebounding. You know, I find it fascinating, Rob, that actually for someone like Stu Till, he's kind of built this, hasn't he, over the summer. What's going through his mind right now? Is there, is there a of pressure on him, do you think? Oh, yeah, you always feel pressure, no question about it. I think you're excited, though, to play with the new toys that yeah. you have, right? <laughs> it's Christmas morning, here they are. Get them out of the box and let them go, and I think that's what he's going to do tonight. Oh, well, let's see if he can. We'll be back with tip-off in the company of Todd Harris and Azania Stewart right after this. It is a beautiful night in Newcastle as the British Basketball League kicks off their season in style. Near capacity crowd here at the Virtu Motors Arena as the Sheffield Sharks come calling as both teams look to start the season 1-0. Alongside Azania Stewart, I'm Todd Harris. Glad to have you with us, Azania. This is going to be a fast game because both squads are loaded with guards. Let's start with Newcastle Eagles. They'll roll out maybe four guards in the lineup. Well, first of all, Newcastle did a fantastic job in the offseason, really going for some real killers, uh, you know, going for uh, Josh Ward, Hibbert, Larry Austin Jr. They've done such a good job. Obviously, we've spoken about Taj Green, the dunking machine. Um, they've done really, really good to uh, get the season started with some real and good players. And the Sheffield Sharks bring a pretty talented squad as well with a lot of versatility and a lot of experience when you look at their backcourt as well as a guy like Jordan Rotino who brings pretty much everything to the game. Yeah, Rotino also shoots the ball so well. Last season shot at 35% from the three-point line. Really gets to stretch the floor, right? So you can drive and kick and then also he's very good at getting the ball on the floor. Opening night for head coach Atiba Lyons in his 16th season. And he'll be going head to head with Mark Studel, head coach of the Eagles in his second year. Our officials on the night, Ian McDonald, Chris Dodds, and Nick Nassie. And we're underway as the season of British Basketball League tips off tonight. Real excitement. Yeah. God, I'm so excited. The crowd is it here in the building. Wardrobe malfunction there as the shoe comes off. It looks like uh, Larry Austin Jr. just stepped right out. That's not a good start. No. <laughs> Lace that thing up again. We, you know, we had shoe competition the other night. You, you picked out the right shoe. I was off. I thought it was a Kobe. I you did. corrected me. It was, a, it was a LeBron. And this was the same pair in green. Look at uh, that. This right is up the in back. black. Yeah, it's a LeBron. Relaced, ready to go. No problem. Smile on his face. Newcastle Eagles will be in there. 
homestanding black uniforms trimmed with the white. Sheffield Sharks will be in the gray. Long distance three off the mark, and there'll be a foul away. Looks like a loose ball foul going against the Sharks. We talk about this being a, a smaller lineup, Azania. Yeah. Both squads coming with a lot of guards, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on the big men down low. Yeah, we spoke about it. Um, Newcastle going real, you know, short, fast. Um, they really pride themselves on the defensive end, turning into quick offense. Nice inbound pass stripped away by the Sharks and taken right back. And this will be a calling card all season long by the Newcastle Eagles. Their defense, the foul, and not the and one, but. They are active hands across the board. This time, Jordan Johnson gets it done. And that's a great call by the referee. Ramsey there just gives him a little shoulder hit look and uh, tries to, you know, style it out. But the referees are all over that one. So that will send Jordan Johnson to the line. 5'10", the smallest player on the court right now out of UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Excellent defender by way of his hometown in Waukegan, Illinois. Great defender, but also the three-point shot. Obviously, he takes uh, a long time to set his feet, but it is a killer of a shot. He does really well, yeah. And there's the answer to a trivia question. Who scored the first points in British Basketball League in 2023? Jordan Johnson. Wow. Okay, I need to put that one in my pocket. <laughs> Knocks down both, so an early lead for the home standing Eagles. Azini, if you're the Sheffield Sharks and head coach at Tebow Lions, what do you need to see from your team early on? I think right there, being aggressive, head down, making sure that you uh, score your easy points, especially the layups, uh, but and also solid on the defensive end. Yeah, Terrell Allen went right at the defense, put it up and in, and the Sh Eagles answer right back with their big man, Marcus Malcolm Del Pesh. Del Pesh, Del Pesh brothers, both in this league. How great is that? You've got twin brothers playing against each other. Marcus Del Pesh doesn't look like he's going to be able to go tonight because of injury. Great defense there coming from Josh Ward Hibbert. Up and under, beautifully done. And Larry Austin now with four points. And listen, this is where Austin Jr. is at his finest. He plays tough under the you know, hard-nosed defense, and then he can finish any way at the rim. Right now, you have to say the pace favors the Eagles. This is what they like to do, and this is what head coach Lyons said. He saw on paper, fast, up-tempo. Beautiful head fake, up and under with a spin, and one for the Eagles. Ricky McGill, lightning quick on the baseline. McGill, beautiful finish here. Like you said, baseline uses the rim to protect himself. And a nice little spin and Ooh. hits the glass. Yeah, it's a nice finish, isn't it? A little extra English on there. Chance now to push the lead to seven early on here. First quarter, first game of the season here. British Basketball League as the Newcastle Eagles, no surprise, out to a quick start, very fast. Still 8.24 to play as any in the first, and this team is like a track squad. They are out and running exactly what head coach Mark Studel wants to do. Yeah, and I think uh, this is what they went out and scouted yeah. and, and really got their team together. They wanted to be fast. They wanted to be tough on the defensive end. I know um, Larry Austin Jr., he hangs his and um, prides himself on the defense. So when you've got a player like that, that's such a lovely thing to have. Miguel unable to convert the three-point play. And the foul is going to be issued this time on Larry Austin, a little over aggressive. Possibly, and a lot of people talk about it being the defensive player of the year, is Larry Austin Jr. Yeah, like I said, he loves defense. And I just think when you pride yourself on defense, and that's an easy call there to grab the referee, when you pride yourself on defense, it's the way to start, and then your offense comes to you. Nice three-point shot, getting the Sharks back into it. We talk about the speed, and that's a big part of the Newcastle Eagles and what Mark Studel likes to do and the way he built this team. The Sheffield Sharks, a lot of people thought, you know, they're the tortoise. They're the team, as, as Drew pointed out in the pregame, they played a little slower, but they picked up some, some hairs on this squad as well. They sure did. We saw the three vertical and then that big rebound. Let's see if they can get an answer right here, cut into this lead. Jabril Adekoya driving, nowhere to go. Kicks it back out. Excellent interior defense. The stop and pop. Give two to Pipkins. Beautiful. That young man can flat out play from Paris, Texas. 
by way of Purdue. Absolute springs in those legs. Pipkins picks up his first two points of this season. Coming off a season last year where he averaged more than 10 points a game. On the step, nothing happening there. Del Pesce will try to back it and loses the handle. And 24 second shock expired, but it'll go the way of the Sharks. And they're going to break on this. Nicely done, Deville Ramsey. And a lovely answer by Ramsey, but really started on the yeah. defensive end. Made it tough for uh, Newcastle, excuse me. And then a nice finish down the other side. Well done, the Sharks, on that possession. I'll tell you what, Azania, if you're a team that likes to pack in the zone defense and slow it down, you're going to have a problem with both the Sharks and the Eagles. Passing lane disrupted, and another steal this time for the Sharks. Highlight real time, and a throwdown. Well done as Jalen Pipkins made eye contact and said, just throw it up there where I can get it. What a shift in momentum. Momentum and an alley-oop play. I knew it as soon as he hit that nice jump shot. I was thinking, oh man, Newcastle, you better watch out because he's seen the ball go through the net. And sometimes that's all you need to see. Quick drive to the lane and the foul won't get the and one. But a nice answer coming right back as Newcastle has seen that 8-2 lead evaporate. Now it's 11-8 Sheffield. Here's one more time. Gives him a little head fake. Catches the hip. Near capacity crowd here on a Thursday night in Newcastle, Virtu Motors Arena. Fans still filing in, and they've gotten a little quieter than they were in that first two or three minutes. Yeah, definitely Newcastle. Obviously, they love their basketball. The fans come in their numbers. Yep. Also, Taj Green now has subbed in, number 55. How does that change the dynamic for the big Eagles time. now when he comes in? Yeah, big time, obviously. His, uh, he plays above the rim on the defensive end, able to, you know, change shots, block shots, but then on the offensive end, just so aggressive, very fast, and can get to the rack at any time he wants. Former Caledonia Gladiator, Jordan Johnson, hits that one. So now it's a one-point game with 6-10 to play here in the first period opening night of British basketball. The league is coming at you, and it's coming fast as those two players get tangled up, and it looks like the foul is going to be issued to Josh Ward-Hibbert. People don't know this about Josh Ward-Hibbert, an amazing tennis player. Yes. Like, amazing. Fantastic, yep. Ah, he got just hooked get, up with yeah, the big just man. Get caught up. Yeah, he is an incredible tennis player. Drive to the lane, nicely done, as DeVille Ramsey now picks up his second basket. Eagles looking to run again, up by three. Inside, and you got to respect him. You saw the gray jerseys of the Sharks surrounding Taj Green as soon as he got the ball on the inside. Yeah, you're right. And I was just going to say, um, the Sheffield Sharks really, you know, I think a little bit of nerves at the beginning. Yeah. Newcastle came out strong, uh, hit them with a good couple of layups, but now they've settled their nerves and they're up 13-10. Uh, you kind of expect that on opening night. I mean, when your career, when you're playing with the London Lions, did your coach ever say, you know, let's just withstand the early storm that's going to come yeah. and be there in the fourth? Yeah, I mean, even us in this, uh, in here, right? Yeah. We've been excited. <laughs> I've been All day. Yeah, I've been jumping up and down. Usually I get nervous, but today I've just been so excited for uh, the British Basketball League, what is going to happen, obviously over 200 games. Oh. Um, so many good things to yeah. talk about throughout this game, and we'll bring them to you. And obviously back in the studio with uh, Jeanette Ovi and Coach Rob. But the bringing back of the All-Star game, North versus South, I'm, I'm pumped for that. Yeah, I can't wait for the All-Star game. But you're right, I just think nerves, being able to settle them. Right. Um, you know, and sometimes when you get those butterfly feelings in your stomach, I never like to get rid of them. I like to just feel the moment and uh, just let the game come to me. Full court press being implemented by the homestanding Eagles. Slowing down just a little bit. Look at the shot clock at 10. Ramsey on the kick. Nice head fake baseline jumper hard off the rim. And it's just easy pickings for Ramsey. Yeah, and a lucky fall to Ramsey, but he's and got he the steal. Right back. Look at this. 
So great defense being implemented there. They're going to get Parker Stewart on the push. But Ramsey, we talk about the quick hands of Larry Austin. How about this? Yeah, look at that. Shame he didn't finish. But definitely, I can feel the heat uh, turning up. Sheffield Sharks have got themselves going on the defensive end. And now, um, because of how hard they're working, they've got themselves an out-of-bounds play. And also, Parker Stewart is in the game. This is the first time we're seeing him, number 45. Bennett Cook has also checked in for head coach Alliance and the Sharks. Wholesale substitutions. Cook knows to work on the inside, out the glass hard, and gets it. Wanted the and one, but a good finish at the rim. Strong finish, in fact. I'll tell you what, if the Newcastle Eagles thought they were in for an easy opener, uh, not so much. Sheffield came to play on opening night here. British Basketball League, game number one. And the foul's going to be called away as Bennett Cook, young man out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, he's more disciplined, Cook. You were doing so well. The clock was at 2.6, and that's going to reset to 14. But, you know, yet again, the Sharks turning it up on the defensive end, looking really, really good. I, need, I think um, Newcastle will take this time out, regroup. Coach Mark, for sure, will need to get his team. We've got a good order. one in the first quarter. 4.35 to play in period number one. It's a five-point lead for the visiting Sheffield Sharks. Fans continue to fill the seats here at the Vertu Motors Arena on opening night. As Zania alluded to, plenty of games throughout the season. A season, Zania, that's going to stretch all the way into May, so let's pace ourselves. But this is going to be a lot of fun. So many great things that they've introduced this year in the league. Yeah, steady pace wins the race, right? Uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and I think this is what's so important. It's a grueling season. Uh, you want to manage, you know, players, time, injuries. A lot's going to happen throughout these next months. But I just think um, taking one game at a yep. time, you know, it is a long season. And I think we should both take that advice because <laughs> it is a long season. Our voices are definitely going to be sore. But I just think, um, and also you grow and you learn, right? This is game one. Um, Coach Mark said um, about the long preseason uh, that it was a bit too long, but they needed it. Opening night of British Basketball League as we are in the midst of the first period. 4.35 to play. It is a five-point lead for the visiting Sheffield Sharks over the homesteading Newcastle Eagles. Newcastle got out to an 8-2 lead and back came the Sharks. Todd Harris and Zania Stewart with you on a great evening here at the Vertu Motors Arena as the Newcastle Eagles need to find their mojo. I think, Zania, you got to point straight away to Sheffield Sharks and their interior defense really slowing down the Eagles' transition. Yeah, I think, like you said, um, really just focusing in, though, I think Newcastle came, hit them with the first right. punch, and then they've just answered back. Now as Sheffield um, is having to, you know, just control the game. I mean, no problem breaking the press, and now they'll go to work with the shot clock at 10. And they're going to get a foul there, just a little too aggressive for Larry Austin Jr., known to have some of the quickest hands in the British Basketball League, and he's called for his second foul. And he lets the officials know he's not pleased with that call. Oh, that's Never sad. once have I yeah. seen an official change their call. Not once. So you can complain all you want, but have you ever seen that? No, I've no. never seen it. Once, once, that, once that's made, it's, it's done. It feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Stewart will have to go to his bench, and uh, he's got plenty to choose from. Jordan Johnson, uh, the number of guards that Coach Stewart and the Eagles have, it's amazing, explosive. Nice interior pass down low, and they find Bennett Cook open for the easy one. Nice. 
14, 13. Floater up and almost a highlight reel there for Del Pesh. Comes back the other way, an outlet pass, beautifully done. Not enough English on it for Ramsey, and back come the Eagles. And good job, Newcastle getting back yep. to stop Ramsey on that breakaway layup. Jordan Johnson gets it done on the inside. So with 3.55 to play in the first period, it's a 19-13, excuse me, lead for Sheffield. As we check in with Coach Rob Paternoster. Coach, you're going to be facing these team teams soon enough. What do you like what you're seeing? Get our comms sorted out there as the foul in the transition. So it'll be Eagles who are continually trying to push the pace as Adia. They trail by four with just over three minutes to go. We'll be checking back in with Jeanette Ovi and Coach Rob in the studio at halftime as well throughout the game. But you see the foul situation right now seven for the Sharks, three for the Eagles. Coach Stiddle doesn't seem too worried. We were talking just before that action there of the depth that the Newcastle Eagles have of players they'll go. We saw them play the USA Select team, and it was a really close game. But Coach used pretty much everyone on that roster in different capacities. Yeah, I think you're right. And also going for Will Neighbor just checked in, right. number 88, two fat ladies. If you're a bingo player, you know what that is. <laughs> um, but they went out in the offseason and got him. Uh, an incredible vet has yeah. been in this league for so long, uh, has played with many teams and uh, just a great guy on and off. A fantastic, uh, you know, player that you want on your team. Ooh. So a timeout on the court now, yep. 3.04 to go. We'll go back down to the studio. Rob, uh, what are you seeing and uh, what's your takeaway, especially if you're a Newcastle Eagle fan? Well, if you're a Newcastle Eagles, you want to get out on the open floor. I think Sheffield have to do a better job of taking care of the ball. I think early on in the game, Sheffield turned the ball over, and every time they turned it over, Newcastle had a great look at the basket. When they've got it into the half-court game, they've done a much better job at defending them. Coach, how hard is it to get that offense to click this early in the season? Because it seems like the easy fix is obviously fast break. That fixes everything. Yeah, half-court offense, really difficult early. You know, you don't have all your sets in. It takes a while for that. So, sure, I mean, you're going to be much better off if you can get out in the open floor. And when you look at the team that Newcastle built, they certainly look like a team that that's going to be their MO this year. Get Absolutely. out in the open floor, get, a, get to the basket, and let those quick guards go to work. And coach, we wish you best of luck when you face both these teams. Head coach Rob Pastor glad to have him with us tonight as the head coach of Leicester Riders. Coach has got to have his yeah. handful, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, the whole league, top to bottom, lots, lots of parity, Azani, across the board. And, and Coach Rob's squad looks pretty good as well. But uh, man, all the teams have gone out and found some great things, uh, added some ingredients that they need. Uh, new faces, I guess, in new places is the key. No, I think Coach made some really great points. But also, talking about um, timeouts, what's new this year is uh, the TV timeouts. So um, if I'm a coach or a player, I'm kind of waiting for that extra rest. Do I call one if I know one's coming? A lot has right. changed um, in the league, so kind of learning that on the TV games on Thursday night here on Sky Sports. Two-point game now is Sheffield. Trying to get their offense rolling. Do they get it from the outside? Yes, they do. By way of Parker Stewart, who just checked in. The young man from Union City, Tennessee. By way of University of Pittsburgh, Indiana. And then back to Tennessee, Martin, where he lit it up for that squad in the U.S. So now a five-point lead. Interesting to see, Azania, how teams respond to playing from behind. On the baseline, going to work, can't get it to fall. Ricky McGill had a nice look there, and Sharks will slow it down just a little bit and get their offense set. Why, they've got a great second team where you can come in with a guy like Bennett Cook and Parker Stewart off the bench, instant offense as Cook drives the lane. He's fouled, he'll go to the line. I mean, the Sheffield Sharks are not short on offensive weapons. No, at all. Like, we've also said they've gone out here, Cook putting it on the floor, using his speed Oof. against uh, Will Neighbor and gets to the rim. Doesn't finish, but uh, walks to the line. But you're right. I just think both of these teams have done a great job uh, adding depth 
to their bench when you can go to your sixth, seventh, and eighth right. man, uh, especially as we're talking about this long, long season. Um, I think bench is critical in winning a, a championship. Cook steps up the line, calmly knocks it down despite the sarcastic cheers of the Virtu Motors Arena, and that's what we love. We'd love to have you supporting your squad, and here comes the noise again. We'll see how much work he put in the offseason, no problem. I love that. You step up when the fans come up and you knock them down, no problem. Yeah, free throw is so important. A little light full court press for the Sharks. Seven point lead with two minutes to play here. The opening period on opening night in the British Basketball League. That one comes up short. And now the Sharks with an opportunity to possibly push it to a 10 point lead with a three. And uh, Sheffield Sharks had a preseason game against Bristol Flyers, 79-70. They had a great game uh, preseason, so they're ready. Has a good look at the three off the heel, but it'll stay with him. Another three. Here's the launch. Another one, and double offensive rebounds. This time the Eagles come away with it, and they've got a man streaking down court. Nice pass. Well done. That was a thing of beauty. The no look as he saw the big man running. And you know, Azania, you got to award the big man when he runs. Yeah, and Green a little bit disappointed with himself oh. behind the head and doesn't manage to finish. A little frustrated. Maybe he should have rocked the rim with that one. Ricky McGill with the no look. That would have been highlight reel across the league had he converted. It'll send Taj Green, the former Manchester Giant to the line. The young man just 25 years of age out of Columbia, South Carolina uh, by way of Benedict College. So a lot of spring still left in those legs. We saw him in preseason. Looked like he had a little hyperextension, but I think everyone in the building took a deep breath and then he came back after spending a little time on the exercise bike. Yeah, he did. He just tweaked it. Uh, he's got a little bit of tape and strapping on that left leg, but I'm glad to see him back out and uh, also, I didn't want to say he and his free throws. I didn't want to and jinx it. Team, so. <laughs> hey, we got a great feature coming up at halftime with Jeanette Ovi and uh, Coach Rob uh, as Taj Green goes sneaker shopping. I know that's something near and dear to your heart. So you have quite a collection. Yeah, I do actually. How's your sneaker game? Uh, it's not, I don't think it's quite your level, but I'm more than happy to go with it, especially if you're buying. <laughs> 24-18 and one minute to play here in the first period. That was a long range three off the mark. And here come the Eagles looking to capitalize on this. Beautiful, leave it for him, and he will deliver. Rocks the rim, Taj Green, what we know him for. The highlights flying and dunking. Look at it once again. Oof. Right into your living room. And that was all started off the great rebound off the Zach Walton long three miss. So just like this, a game that was a seven points is now just down to four. And it looks like the Eagles are going to try to end this first period, Zaney, with a little bit of pressure. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Slow the uh, Newcastle Eagles, excuse me, the sh uh, Sharks right. down and, and really make the offensive clock a bit smaller here. Maybe turn them over also. They're just chewing up time on the shot clock before the Sharks even get into their offensive set. The clock has been down closer to 10 or 11 seconds, so here we go. 10 seconds on the shot clock. They go inside to Cook. He spins away. Beautifully done. Neighbors there. Takes up and under. Can't get it to fall, and kind of a delayed foul there. I thought that maybe Neighbor had got him on the initial, but Cook stayed with it, and he'll be rewarded with two shots. Real poise down low, yeah. doesn't he, Cook? Takes his time, feels the defender, and then has lovely footwork uh, around the rim. And there he is, back at the free throw, calls in. Will Neighbor a little bit uh, of trouble down there, down low. Did you meet Will Neighbor's mom? You had a great story about meeting no, Will Neighbor's mom. No, I've never met. Miss Neighbor, well, shout out to her. Well, she was happy about it because you gave some love to her son. Yes, that's yeah. what happened. So okay. a couple seasons ago, I got to meet um, Will, and he was on the Lions team, and I had never met him before. Right. And he came up to me and he said, hey, I just want to say thank you. I was like, what? What for? He was like, my mom said you spoke very highly of me. Well, you better pick up your defense, there Will you Neighbor, go. or Mama Neighbor isn't going to be happy. <laughs> 15 seconds on the shot clock, 18 on the game clock as the first period comes to a conclusion. The Sharks trying to leave the first with a five-point lead. 
Johnson with the ball, drives on his right-hand side, goes into the tall timbers, throws it away. Neighbor takes a look at it, thought about it, and then the hoisting at the horn. And that was just a 24-second clock, and Taj Green was fighting for it. Devin Whitfield got the shot off. A little bit of helter-skelter there at the end as the shot clock was dwindling away. And it seems like the Eagles can get to the rim anytime they want, Azania. We've seen that before with their guard play, but unable to convert. Here it is at the end. But the rebound is so important. Sharks yep. need that rebound. Taj Green battling for it, getting the second opportunity. And when he's in the shooting motion, referee yep. calls it. And it's 0.2 on the clock. So Taj Green, who was 1-1 one one in his last trip to the charity stripe, will step up now. The young man out of South Carolina hits the first. Absolute highlight reel last year as he was defended, decided just to throw off the backboard and go yeah. in for the self dunk. And uh, we've seen that a dozen times, never gets old. He's closed the gap now down to four. Make it three. And that'll do it for the first period of play as the Eagles get out to an early six point lead and the visiting Sheffield Sharks come back with a vengeance as they close out what has been a very entertaining first period of Xenia. I'll tell you what, the Sharks came to play tonight. Yeah, and what a back and forth game, a real game of momentum swings. You know, uh, Newcastle Eagles came out strong at their home court and then the Sharks came back and attacked. So after one period of play here in the opening night of British Basketball League 2023, it's Sheffield 25, Newcastle 22. We'll be back to the Virtu Motors Arena after this. You're watching the British Basketball League on Sky Sports. Back inside Virtu Motors Arena, Newcastle and Sheffield kicking off the new season of British Basketball League. Todd Harris alongside Azania Stewart, great first period, 25-22 as Sheffield came from behind to take the lead going into the second period. And Azania, we were talking during that break of the contributions that both teams are getting off the bench as Parker Stewart's able to rattle that one in. Yeah, I think a, a really important part of these teams if they want to go far and deep. But also this game, right? It's fast, it's electric, uh, and you can't play so many backdoor. Here you go. Oh, nearly a three-point play for Larry Austin Jr. As the defense was coming late, foul be called on Jordan Retinio, the 6'5 yeah. guard out of Castro Valley, California. And Retinio, he said, my bad, he knows. Yeah. He needs to get over to that help position way quicker, especially when Austin Jr. is uh, getting to the rim. You know what he wants. He wants to put his head down and get to the rack. And the guard play on both sides I've been so impressed with Zania so far. I know it's early on in the season, but yeah. uh, the guards here, they have courage. And I say that because they are not afraid to go to the tall trees and, and take the contact. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about Ramsey for me. Okay. Six points in that first um, quarter, but it came from his defense. We saw him take a quick steal out of bounds. Uh, not afraid at all. Is a very physical player. Is small in height, but, you know, courageous in toughness. 27-24, Sheffield on top in their traveling grays. Jabril Adekoya, miscommunication there, and it'll be a turnover, so Newcastle will get another crack at with an opportunity to tie or cut it to one. Did you know Adekoya speaks fluent Spanish, as habla español? I did not. I knew yeah. he was a former Leicester writer, and I'm thinking that Coach Rob wishes he still had him, but the Eagles give it right back. Yeah, both teams back-to-back uh, -back mistakes. Both in the giving mood. Terrell Allen has checked back in for head coach Atiba Lions and the visiting Sharks. And Zach Walt, who we saw just a moment ago, also into the game. Trying to get a backdoor cut. Two black jerseys there. Not many places to go with it. He found some space somehow and got it up, but the rebound ripped away by Josh Ward Hibbert. On the drive and again. Too easy. Jordan yep. Johnson, no problem getting to the rim. Jordan Johnson. Remember, he's 5'10". Yeah. But plays like 6'5", yeah. in my opinion. Not comparing him to, but <laughs> I'm talking about the courage of like an Allen Iverson, who, who was, what, 6'1", yes. and played like he was 6'6", and he didn't fear anybody. Pipkins now. 
He finds space. Push off and the foul. Boy, oh boy. How'd you like that? Todd, we saw that in the first quarter. Obviously, that is in his repertoire yeah. and what he's trying to get to. Beautiful jump shot, 15-footer, and the foul, and one. Wow, he's going to be a problem. And I think they might have gotten Jordan Johnson for that one. Did Johnson get him on the arm on the extension? Nine, 26, 8.15 to play before the half as Jalen Pipkins goes to the line, can't convert the three-point play, and rebound ripped away by Taj Green. Back come the Eagles. We got ourselves a game. Yes, we do. Just the first half of the first game of the new season here in the British Basketball League. Happy to be with you on Sky Sports. Taj Green, wow, channeling his inner cream Abdul-Jabbar with a modified skyhook as he went across the lane. Adekoye on the outside, hands it off to Pipkins. Pipkins crosses over, goes down, drops it over to Adekoye, thought about it momentarily, and a great job by Neighbor holding his ground. So three seconds on the clock. Pipkins on the step back, hard off the back rim, ripped away, nicely done, and inside should be an easy basket, but it's not, as Jordan Rotino had a good look at it, and Zach Walton will The Sharks doing reset. a great job on the rebounding glass, Todd. And the foul on Green, that was kind of a silly foul so far out there than the reach around. Yeah, back-to-back -back rebounds for the Sharks, giving them extra possessions. Yeah. The Newcastle Eagles need to box out. They need those rebounds. You can't afford for the Sharks to get multiple rebounds, and then you put them in pressure. You know, you foul. Basically, five rebounds to two, the Sharks leading it, and two of them coming on that last exchange. So, yeah, you give an opportunity. Oh, backdoor cut. Adekoya not on the same page as Rotino as he gave the fake like he was going to go baseline and then pulled it back. So turnover again to the Sharks nursing a three-point lead. All right, now time for the Eagles to do what they do. Inside pass. Green bump from behind. It goes out of bounds. He wanted the foul. It'll stay with possession. Making his case to the officials. Deep range three, high arcing, not there off the hands of Green. Stays in play and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Sheffield. Well, Zania, you're going to be a, a busy young lady this weekend because there are a lot of fixtures as British Basketball League kicks off across the board. I'm looking forward to that Bristol game with Plymouth City. That'll be a good one you'll be able to see on YouTube. And then coaches going back to work, Leicester Riders taking on the Cheshire Phoenix. Yeah, a lot of basketball this weekend is going to be fully packed. We'll move on to YouTube over the weekend. As uh, so a turnover happens now, multiple turnovers for the Eagles. Got to just take care. Mark Schuller losing his mind. He's had to sit down and catch yeah. a breath there on the side. Um, just really unforced turnovers. They just need to take their time and be a little bit more poised with the ball. Four more games coming up as you see the turnovers mounting for the Newcastle Eagles. They do a pretty good job normally of handling and taking care of the ball. Shot clock now down to five. Drive inside out. Rotino left open for the three. Buries it. Bang. Jordan Rotino buries the three. Listen, we spoke about his high percentage from the three-point shot. When his feet are set, nothing but net. And Drew on the court pregame saying that's exactly it. You double-team elsewhere, you leave Rotino open, he'll burn you with a three. Drawn up perfectly there, inside, nowhere to go. Rotino kicks it around to the left side. Shot clock still at 12. Plenty of time. Six-point lead for the Sharks. Cross-court pass. Walton, hard off the back rim, ripped away by Larry Austin Jr. Even though they didn't score there, I kind of like that offensive yeah. set for the Sharks. Real taking their time using the whole shot clock. Del Pesh going up, he's going to get fouled. Adekoya held his ground, but he got him on the arm. So that's a Malcolm Del Pesh. Twin brother plays for the Sharks, not playing tonight. Marcus injured, unable to go. Here is one more time. Ooh. 
There's a nice video I saw where it said uh, Brother Malcolm, not too much better than him. So they're proper, you know, competition. Absolutely. Um, and I love that, that head to head. So Adequoy will have love. to come out. Bennett Cook will come back in. We talked about Cook. He had uh, a nice little outburst of, what, seven points in five minutes? Yeah, it was. Yeah, seven points in five minutes. That's efficiency. That's a lovely stat. Put yeah. me in the game, that's, coach. That's yeah. when you find yourself more playing time. Yeah. Put me in for five minutes, coach. I guarantee you seven. Del Pesh hits them both. Newcastle's not throw. going away. Down by four, 5.36 to play here in the first half. I want to remind you, a lot of great stuff coming up in our beautiful British Basketball League and studios. You've got Jeanette Kwachi, Ovi Soko, and Rob Pastor-Nostro. No other reason to stick around for those three. Ball deflected, it will stay with the Sharks. That was a nice stat that just came up. Uh, the Eagles, 16 from 19. They're being aggressive. They're putting their head down. They're forcing the referees to have to make a call and, uh, you know, and uh, put the Sharks in trouble. Maybe that's what they need to do to get back to this game. They're, yeah. they're not going to change their MO, are they? I mean, that's who they are. They like to play. Oh, nicely done before the shot clock as the Sharks get two more. Uh, the Eagles are who they are. You're not going to see them all of a sudden transition and, and say, oh, let's just play half-court offense and slow it down. No, they're going fast. Uh, but you know who is taking their time is the Sharks. Coach yeah. Lyons has has them so disciplined. I love it. Here they're in a 1-2-2 two, two zone in, in their defense. So they're changing up things on the defensive end and then the offensive end taking their sweet time. Del Pesh driving on the lane in the left hand. It gets knocked away and it stays with the Sharks. Long three not there. Cook has it again. To your point, Azania, multiple opportunities, offensive rebounds. If you get two every time you go down, you just reload that offense. Multiple opportunities, multiple looks from the outside. Yeah, Newcastle at halftime, they need to talk about that. And on the defensive end, doing a great job on the glass. We talked about the Eagles being a smaller team. They like to play three, maybe even four guards. But right now, it is just sharks all day, all night on the glass. They're outworking Newcastle, in my opinion. Fade away, not there. And this time, nice rebound taken away by Taj Green. Backdoor cut, nicely done, up and under. Can't complete the three, but a foul, and that'll send Josh Ward Hibbert to the line. Well done, that's beautiful eye communication, Azania, early in the season. Yeah, and that's a good job from Josh Ward Hibbert, going back door and, uh, you know, getting to the room. We'll step aside, we'll be back to Newcastle after this. Three forty-six to play in the opening half of British Basketball League. Todd Harris, Azania Stewart, with you. Six-point lead for the visiting Sharks. Azania, is this a situation where Mark Studel needs to make changes or adjustments, or is it just the Sharks are playing better defense? Well, right now I think uh, Sharks are out playing the Eagles. They need to turn up the heat. You can't coach heart. You have to come out wanting the ball. I think the Sharks are doing a fantastic job on the offensive end, getting multiple looks at the basket, and that's the. the game comes down closer and closer that's going to be important Josh Ward Hibbert former London Lion picked up a nice trophy last year with the Lions as they won the season in the championship yeah but um I won the trophy of uh, icon of the I remember that yes, London I Lions. Totally me and Josh Ward Hibbert were going head to head he is very fashionable I've got to shout him out but I, I won the limited edition uh, Azania Stewart t-shirt oh, last year during the playoffs I never got one. Oh. they were gone like that okay I need to ask my Caught management the gone <laughs> 3 30 to go now shot clock under 10 Sheffield looking to answer back, hop step, look in the corner, wide open for three, can't hit it. Here come the Eagles. That's probably the best place you want to put Taj Ward out on the wing where he can't go to the rim and just rock another, get the fans off their feet dunk. We've already seen one of those from him earlier on. Charles did a good job though in that transition yeah. defense. 
slowing the speedy Newcastle Eagles. They did a really good job. Eagles now need to, you know, really hone in. They've got 13 seconds and they need a bucket just to, you know, bring it down to two or one. Almost picked off on the inbound play. Bodies on the floor. A lot of hustle early on. Gotta like that. Unfortunately, Taj Green was on the line when he took possession of it. So it'll be a turnover and the Sharks will take over. And they're probably going to have to come and yeah. wipe the floor. This is, here's the replay. Look, a lot of bodies on the floor hustling. Who wants it more? And yet again, it's a shark's body on the floor getting hold of it. Good call by the officials. Again, our official tonight, Ian McDonald, Chris Dodds, and Nick Nassi. So they'll clean up the moisture, keep the safety good. You like the officials? They look good tonight. too. I like that. Yeah. What would you call that, a burgundy? Yes. We're looking at burgundy? Yes. British basketball league's not messing around. They need to look the part too. We look great, and so do they. <laughs> All season long, Sky Sports has you covered. The next one coming up next Thursday, 7.30 p.m. It'll be the defending champion London Lions taking on the Caledonia Gladiators. The London Lions game. coming back with a new head coach. A lot of the faces come back, of course. Sam Decker, uh, reigning MVP, will be back as well. But uh, we'll see what Caledonia can do. Yeah, Caledonian's gone out and uh, done very well. Tell you what, this is not something you want to do in the backcourt. His dribble too much. This team lives off this. And a nice job of defense as Larry Austin converts for two. Beautiful. Two-point game. Josh Ward Hibbert turning up the heat on the defensive end really caused that turnover. Absolute lockdown defense there on the half court. Inside to Coke. Double team coming. Coke steps on the inside. Trouble. And then you'll get him for steps. Yeah. If I was Cook, I would have, that, I mean, that's a good move, but I think pass it out, see the double team, two defenders come to you, now kick it. How about this lineup now for head coach Mark Studel? Eagles had a six point lead to start the game, and here they are with an opportunity to tie or take the lead with a three. Inside, green, extra pass, beautifully done, can't convert. Del Pass keeps it alive, comes up short there, ball knocked out of bounds. And it's going to go to the Sharks. Two good looks. I held my breath on that play. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the rebound by De um, Del Pesh, excuse me. And uh, just not enough on that little baby hook. Off the hands of Taj Green. So back come the Eagles. Full court press. 2.12 to play before the half. 24 seconds on the shot clock. And the Sharks. There you go, send everyone down. Yeah, and Ramsey it out. back in the game also, been on the bench. Uh, like the bus is coming a bit too long for me, so I'm glad to see him back in the game. Incredible move. Pipkins. Restores order. Yeah, Pipkins, I'm really liking him. I haven't seen much of him. Uh, this is obviously, he's coming into this league, but that go-to, who's gonna be able to stop him getting to that jump shot, that mid-range, really tough, and uh, is able to finish yeah. every single time. Ramsey playing some really tight defense on Larry Austin Jr. I think that's gonna be a quick off. Who is faster between those two? <laughs> Both yeah. of them, I'm telling you what, they have fast hands, fast feet. This is a great matchup in the backcourt. Oh, and I'll tell you what, Bennett Cook, if he's called for this, he got his money's worth. They play a lot of American football in Wisconsin. You know, the Green Bay Packers and Wisconsin Badgers. Watch this. Yeah, I'll just clear them out. There you go. Ricky McGill just got trucked. Yeah. And referees um, doing a wonderful <laughs> job, mind you, all over it. Uh, we're going to have a timeout. But Cook's got to be careful. He can't pick up any more fouls. It's so important he stays in this game for his team. So, under two minutes to play, it is a four-point ball game. And Xenia Stewart, you get a sense that this is a pivotal moment for one of these teams to go on a run. Does Newcastle answer back and cut this thing? Or does Sheffield continue their, I don't say their dominance, but they are the more physical team so far? Yeah, I think uh, who comes in out of this timeout and really executes. Uh, it's going back and forth. It's an exciting game. You know, yeah. we've had multiple lead changes. Um, I just think... Whoever, just kind of get yourself steady and get into halftime, talk about things, but you don't want a big 
uh, blowout for Newcastle. They want to chip away. You don't want Sheffield to this score anymore. Him. A lot of noise in the arena the way it should be. Coach Stoodle very fired up. I think he senses this is an opportunity. This is a big opportunity for his squad. Yeah, he might want to undo that top button because <laughs> he is, you know, very, very animated, getting his guys uh, ready good in this timeout. That's what I'm talking about. You want to make sure hit these free throws, cut it within, you know, four points and uh, go into half with potentially a lead. Meanwhile, Coach Lyons. He's not going to have fellas. that, is he? <laughs> Come on. Let's right the ship. We've got a whole half still to play, but let's don't go in like this. You hear a pin drop in the yeah. arena. Everyone Ricky holding McGill him. Yeah. Oh. Got really quiet there, and he just comes up just a bit short. So Did you hear the crowd? This will be a key. Yeah, exactly. He said, oh. <laughs> Puts a little extra on that, knocks it home. Three-point game, 148 to play here in the first half. Opening night, British Basketball League 2023. Full court press by the Eagles. They better get it over. They yeah. don't. Ten seconds. Fellas, if there's two men guarding the ball, someone, simple math is in you, someone's got to be open. Yeah, and that was probably why Coach Mark was so animated in that timeout. Obviously put in the press and it worked. Fans come alive here at Virtu. Here we go. Austin on the ball. Dribble drive, kicks it back out. Green on the wing, thought about it for a second, launches a big three off the rim. And he had nowhere to go. No call there. That should have been a double dribble travel or something because he inbounded it to himself. As Ramsey he got caught. Let go of the ball that came inbounds, Azania, and there was no one there to touch it. And then got it back. Look at this. Here's the shot from Taj Green. He gets the rebound. It's going to go out of bounds. Throws it in. <laughs> well, I don't think. Caught the rebound. He was falling out of bounds. Not an inbound pass. He was falling out of bounds. Basically threw it to himself. Mark. Yeah. Strudel gets a warning from the referees, but I mean, he's fired up. You can see he's chewing that chewing gum to uh, death. Yeah. But he has a great, a great point. Good point. You know? Should have been called. But the Sharks get away with one. Can they capitalize? Here we go. 14 on the shot clock. Bennett Cook calmly steps up. That's a veteran move. Calmly steps up and drains the 15-footer. Yeah, and his defense is off of him, so why not? You have to guard me. Can shoot that. Need to settle here. Eagles. And wow. I thought there was a foul before the travel, but uh, no such thing as a makeup call. But Cook's going to get called for the steps. This is an opportunity for the Eagles. They, they got, I know they like to play up tempo, but they got to settle right here. They've got to come away with points. Yep. They need to execute 14 seconds. Make sure they get a good look and a good shot at the basket. Johnson on the wing, goes up, loses the handle. Cook comes away with the rebound. Here come the Sharks. They have numbers. Pull up. Buries it. Ramsey from the free throw line. So back to back buckets from the Sharks after that what should have been called a travel on Sheffield. But the Sharks' defense yeah. is turning into wonderful offense. They're really locking Newcastle up on the other end. 38-33. Five seconds on the shot clock, 15 on the game. Del Pesce threw it off the body, hoisted it up, had to get something up, tipped up and in. And what a save wow. by Larry Austin. Because they didn't have anywhere to go. Oh, I think Green's got a cr cramp. Cramp on the calf, and that will end the first half. Five-point game. Let's Look at this one more time. Yeah. It's a different angle. This is the tip-in. We didn't see where Taj, Taj Green went down. 
Yeah, he, he's cramping up because they're trying to help him up, get him to the locker room, get him some treatment. Oh, those are painful. Oh, wiggle your toes, let's have a look. Maybe he just got hit, he's pushing back, he jumps up. And as he jumps, he just catches a cramp. Mm. Hope it's nothing more than that. We'll try to find out if our man down on the floor, Drew Lasker, get more information before we start the second half. What we can tell you is we've got a very competitive game as the first half. First game of the 2023 season, the British Basketball League has come to a conclusion, and it is a five-point lead for the visiting Sheffield Sharks. Newcastle got out to a great start, and then they turned it over, and now it is a five-point deficit. 40-35 as we sit it down to the floor, and that's where we find Drew Lasker standing by with Jalen Pipkins. Quite. Uh, this week in practice, coach has been pushing us every day. Uh, so I think we're real good for these moments. Uh, a little adversity won't, won't stop us when we came here for it. So. And every, everything, all the talk is about the new Newcastle League is coming into this one. What would you guys looking to take away from it? Back with half-time analysis uh, right after this. Practice, man, been talking, been Well, welcome back, and what a game we have. 35-40, the Sharks lead, five-point buffer there. And it's fair to say, Newcastle probably relieved just to be a few points behind the Sharks team. They've been playing well, but just unable to get the score, and they need to pull away. Coach Rob. Yeah, Newcastle did come back up and have a win. They feel pretty good about uh, where they're at now. They have a good chance to come back because, um, you know, five-point lead, they're, they're within striking distance. If you look at Newcastle's stats, zero for five from three-point range, no threes for them. No threes for them indeed. And when you look at some of the, the players that have been out there today, we look at a Newcastle team, much has been said about them, Ovi, but we can see it takes a little bit of time to come together. Yeah, the cohesiveness isn't quite there yet, but it's, it's very difficult to, to gain that um, level of trust between the players, the players and the coach this uh, early in the season. And I think that's the difference we're seeing um, from the Sheffield side. These Sheffield guys, they've obviously, a lot of them returned this year. Um, but we see the cohesiveness sort of carrying on from last season. And that's important, isn't it? But one person who has been important on the on the court is, is Jalen Pipkins. He's playing quite well here, Rob. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. He looks comfortable, composed, and you could see uh, why they brought him back. You know, he's done a good job. He's hit some jump shots. You know, that was a nice separation right there for the jumper, but he just looks composed with the ball. And we know he can do that. He can get up <laughs> in the air and finish an exciting player. And this is the thing about this this this. Show. Sheffield Sharks team, they would have been so up for this. You know, last season, three out of the four games they played against the Eagles, they won. So they want to be able to keep that momentum going here, Ovi. They definitely want to be able to keep the momentum going. But again, you know, they have the continuity going. They've got the returning guys from last season, mm -hmm. sort of, um, that have pulled uh, all of the new guys into what they're trying to get done this season. Yeah, and Deval Ramsey as well. Looking good here, Coach Rob. What you need on your first your first game of the season. Yeah, another guy who came halfway through the season last year, and he looks really comfortable out there as well. He can put points on the board quickly, especially in transition. He's quick. He's not afraid to take shots that are contested, but he also has the ability to drive to the basket he's really come out and looks like a guy that's been in the league before and we can have to take a look at his stats um, in this first half of this game and this is somebody again the Sharks need to be able to hold on to these players and really show their pedigree here Ovi yeah I mean you know Ramsey I played with one of his uh, good childhood friends Mie Oni London Lions last year mm -hmm. and you know he sort of alluded to the fact that the guy's a scorer he's always been a scorer um, so there are no real surprises when I see how aggressive he's been tonight yeah, and when you think about the Sharks, when you think about someone like Atiba Lanz, what's he thinking right now in terms of his squad? He's happy where he's at. 35 points he's given up to this high-powered Newcastle team. This is a Sharks type of game. Their defense has always been solid. If you told them last night that he'd only give up 35 at the half, he'd be pretty pumped up about that. He will be. And we spoke a lot at the start of the, of the game about Taj Green. And he is somebody, again, we're going to be watching him. People are talking about him in the MVP conversation. What are your thoughts here, though, over in the first half of this game today? I mean, initially, I was quite surprised that he wasn't in the starting lineup. You know, he's someone that 
I think we all expect to be heavily featured in everything that the, the Newcastle guys are doing. But, you know, nonetheless, I feel like we saw his versatility in, able, in his ability to come off the bench and still be productive and still give to his team, yeah. even though he wasn't in the starting lineup. Um, unfortunately, at the end here, he comes down a little bit rough. Hopefully, he's, he's doing better and, and we'll see more action from him in the second half. Yeah, we do hope, Coach Rob, that is a little bit of cramp, don't we? Don't want this in the first game of the season. Yeah, I thought I read his lips and he said cramp right there. So yeah. hopefully that's what it is and he'll be better in the second half. Absolutely. Well, having the right sneakers is always a top priority for a basketball player, both on and off the court. Ovi can testify, of course. But we followed, you just saw him there, we followed the Eagles' Taj Green as he picked out some new kicks. Hey, it's Taj Green here at Crep City, Newcastle. Let's go shop and see what I find. But it's gonna be on Newcastle Eagles budget. I always wanted to hoop in these, but I feel like that'd be too heavy for me. There's always been a connection with basketballs and sneakers. I feel like, you know, it started with Jordan. And I feel like now just with the, the fashion and shoes, and it's just, it's worldwide. The best player to ever touch a basketball. <laughs> Behind me. This, this is gonna describe my whole team in one. Team works. If you think about it, we got a team full of players. We're real fast, athletic. This is Darius Defoe, man. Here about business. If I could pick a shoe from this table, the Pandas, you know, you can wear those with anything. Like, I can fit in with, with anything. I just feel good, you know, being on the court because I'm still blessed to be able to play. And it's only year two, so I feel like it's more years to come. Uh, welcome back to this British Basketball League clash between the Newcastle Eagles and the Sheffield Sharks at halftime. The score is 35-40. This is the first of five games this week and we've got you covered. Plenty going on tomorrow. The Flyers against the Patriots. You can join us from 7.20. And of course, the Leicester Riders against the Phoenix at 7.35. Then on Saturday, the Scorchers up against the Lions. That's at 10-5. And then on Sunday, the Giants against the Gladiators at 10-6. All available available on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. There is plenty going on and Rob, you will be hosting Cheshire Phoenix tomorrow evening. Um, and up until last year, you'd won every opening game of the season since 2011. No pressure, <laughs> Rob, none at all. And how are you feeling ahead of that? I feel pretty good. A little bit uh, unsure on what we're going to play against because we haven't seen them play yet. But uh, I know our guys are fired up. I know our fans will be fired up. Nothing like opening night. Yeah, and you want to keep that momentum of last season, don't you? We know that you get really animated on the court. The passion is still there, you know? Really? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. We know that you do. I mean, didn't want to embarrass you in your first oh. show with us here, but we have to take a look at this. Oh, no. We love a passionate coach. <laughs> we really, really do. But it's important to you, and is it? Of course it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you got to uh, go all in. I'm all in every game. I'm excited to be out there. I still wish I was playing, to be honest, <laughs> but um, coaching, you know, you can get out there and really get into the game, and I love being on the sideline. No, we wish you the best of luck, and of course, you will be joining us, hopefully, in the studio for the rest of the season as well. And we're coming into this, this, this second half now. For, for Newcastle Eagles, they're really going to have to just show something a bit different, bring a different energy, aren't they, Ovi? Uh, they're going to have to up it. You know, They're going to have to show they want it. They're going to have to dictate the pace and the flow of the game, which is something I don't think they've done um, thus far in the game. And they've allowed the Sheffield Sharks to come into their gym uh, and really set the tone uh, from the first half. So we're going to have to see something different in the second half. And it's really interesting about the Sheffield Sharks as well. They, you know, they're on the road. They won't be back into their new, brand new stadium until October. So for them, they've got a bit of a point to prove when they are on the road, haven't they? I spoke with Coach Lyons about that yesterday, and if they could steal some games here on the road early, it's going to set them up well. That schedule will be favorable to them as they go on. So these early games, they get some wins on the board. They'll put themselves in good position. And do you think that's a different mentality as well, having to think about that? Um, I think it's, it's a necessity. You have to think about those things, especially th at this stage in the season when every coach, every player, they know that they're not where they want to be. This isn't the final product. So as many of these wins, as Coach said, you can get early on in the season, um, the back end of the year is definitely going to come in handy. OK, well, Todd and Azania, of course, they have been in that commentary booth. They've been watching the game as well. And, and for you, Azania, I know watching first game of the season, you texted me this morning, you said it's game day. And it absolutely <laughs> is, isn't it? Well, 
I had to get you excited and ready. Thank you for that. But I just think uh, a wonderful uh, game here for the first game of the season. Back and forth. It's a real thriller. We don't know who's going to win. No, this is very close. And if you were with us at tip-off, which why wouldn't you be? Uh, you saw the Newcastle Eagles come out just like they do. They come out fast. They come out moving. They got out to an 8-2 lead here in front of the crowd at the Virtue Motors Arena. As we get set to start the second half now, what kind of changes do you think Coach Mark Studel does? Or do you tell, does he tell his guys, just settle down and do what we do? Rebound. And rebound, rebound, rebound. Box out. Uh, you know, the Sharks are doing a wonderful job on the um, glass, but then also go rebound on the offensive end to try and uh, get multiple possessions and, and, you know, an easy layups. But what's good here is Taj Green. Sorry, he's back in after, yeah, after that cramp. He did end. start the game and he did come in, but we saw him at the end of the first half with that cramp on his right calf. Here come the Eagles, ball stripped away, drive down the lane, no problem. Just like the game started with Jordan Johnson getting the bucket now to cut it to a three-point lead. Good uh, drive there by Jordan Johnson. Good answer coming out of this half. Azania, if you're the Sheffield Sharks and head coach of Team Alliance, do you make any changes? Is there anything you can see differently from the Sharks? No, I think they did a really good job on both ends. Uh, it's a nice little floater yeah. there. Um, I think they did a really good uh, job. What I really loved, obviously you can hear what I love is defense. <laughs> I'm a defensive player, obviously now retired, going to be next to you a lot, Todd. Um, I won't be out there, but I really prided myself on defense. I think that kind of elevates, um, you know, the energy level. And I think uh, the, sh the Sharks really brought it on the defensive end that then breeds confidence confidence in their offense. Beautiful floater there to start things off for the Sharks. Terrell Allen, who got the start tonight, the 6'3 guard out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, played college in the States at Drexel University of Central Florida, and then finished off at Georgetown. So back to a five-point lead for the visiting Sharks. You heard the folks talking at halftime that the Sharks won't be in their new arena till October. So a lot of road games, they're gonna get used to these traveling grays as Cook drives and he's fouled as he spins across the lane. Bennett Cook getting the start in the second half. He came off the bench in the first half and Azania, he was an absolute spark plug for head coach Lyons. Yeah, and obviously he started and then he's just, uh, you know, built that trust. And you're right, I think he did a really good job. Rob Patanastra, I felt like um, they kind of did him a little dirty there, didn't he? Showing his passion, but you know what's great? Uh, his three-piece suit. Now, oh, he's strong. Yeah, Coach he's brought it. He's fashionable. A little too hard off the hands of Allen. And back come the Sharks, and we're waiting for the call. It's going to foul. He goes into the... Oh, good. Pops up, no problem. And the officials are going to confirm one with the other. Ramsey. Well, well, if mm. yeah, if the ball ever hits the referee, he's in right. play. If he's in play, but then I just think Ramsey was out of bounds there, and uh, they, I think that's the right decision. Yeah. So Darrell Ramsey, despite his excellent defensive effort, ball will stay with the Newcastle Eagles as fans make their way in from halftime, get their seats ready for the second half of a great show. First game of the season here. 2023 British Basketball League opening night. Glad to have you with us on Sky Sports. And the team's trying to find their rhythm here. Both teams, Azania, let's get, let's settle down. Let's get our yeah. offense. Let's get our identity. Let's make crisp passes. See it go through the hoop a couple times. Yeah, settle down. And I hope everyone at home at that halftime boiled the kettle and made a cup of tea <laughs> and ready for second half action. But I really think uh, both teams, you know, just get back into the flow of the game, take your time, and execute. Taj Green now with the ball. We saw him last time on the court on his backside with a cramp on his right leg. He drives only this time, puts up a nice floater sky hook, and that is a beautiful play as he gets it up and over. Bennett Cook was a strong defender. So they've got Adekoya and Cook in the lineup, so the Sharks are going big. Yeah, they are. Um, they are going big. Get the turnover. Johnson loses the handle and the foul is committed. And I think Coach Studel, correct me if I'm wrong, Azania, mm -hmm. he can live with that. He likes the pace, he likes the fast, the fast movement, all that stuff. If you lose the handle once in a while, that's fine. I know he doesn't like turnovers, but he wants to see them go. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Um, and that's how they like to play, obviously fast, uh, quick, a quick layup, um, and then set their offense, but then also 
coach Le uh, Lyons plays like that also. He likes to get out in transition, but then if you don't get that quick layup or that quick three point, he slows it all the way down and likes to use the whole clock. So here, watch, they'll use the whole clock in this offense. Bennett Cook on the handoff. Ramsey hoists up the long distance shot. Bobbles around just a little bit, comes away. Here come the Eagles now with an opportunity to tie it or cut it to one. Beautiful drive to the lane and one. A hard foul, but a classy move as Bennett Cook goes over and says, didn't mean anything by it, but I had to go up and make sure you didn't get the end one, and you did. Ricky McGill, wow. McGill, nice finish at the glass, takes the contact and is able to get the and one. Cook, another foul mm. added to him. Cook's going to have to be a little careful. They're playing with the bigs, the two bigs for the Sheffield Sharks, and Cook's going to take a seat. Yeah, I think it's the right decision. You're going to need him coming down into the fourth. And uh, Newcastle Eagles fans like that. <laughs> Clap for him coming out, but obviously he's picked up a fair few fouls. Ricky McGill rattles it around, and we've got ourselves a new ball game. It's Amy Stewart all even at 42, 7.08 to play in the third period, and we're all even. Little 2 3 zip note, man to man for Newcastle. Shot off the mark. Another rebound by the Sharks. Rotation. They stay with it. Yeah. yeah. Look at us staying with it. Lovely rotation by 45. Puck Stewart. He's not related to me, by the way. So I was going to ask you anything that so you have told me. <laughs> you could kind of uh, re resemble me, no? He's got the curly hair. No? No. Okay. Uh, no. I wasn't buying that. As I was, as I was doing game preparation, right. I was like, uh, that's not her brother. No. You would have told me. Uh, Parker Stewart, yeah, he came off the bench and uh, it's given them a little bit of a boost. Inside here was the action a moment ago. And there's the foul. So two bigs getting back-to-back -back fouls for the Sharks, something that Coach Lyons is obviously going to keep his eye on. Great defense on the inbound passes as a player goes down, no foul called. That shot hoisted up high. Good rebound by Ramsey. Yeah, McGill had to put it up, but he had a hand right in his face. He go inside to the big man, see the mismatch here. Johnson guarding the big. Kicks it back out. Another offensive rebound, thought about it. Ratinho kicks out. Ball goes off, and it's going to stay with the Sharks. It was last touched by Ricky McGill and his quick hands. Bettina doesn't need to think about that. Shooters shoot, honey. Shoot the ball. <laughs> there it is. Oh, nice spin move. Took the contact high off the glass, and Ratino can't get it to fall, and now it's getting really scrappy on the inside. Yeah, it's getting chippy. Referees need to clean this up. This was about to be a highlight play. Good uh, roll spin move, but then uh, doesn't finish. The Eagles were looking for the left-hand push-off that uh, Rettino got away with on Jordan Johnson as he spun away. Always got to make your case, right? So Taj Green will take a seat. Yeah, he'll take a seat. And you know what else he needs to take a seat on? He said exactly. the pandas were his favorite Yeah, sneaker. he called out the pandas. No. It's not my favorite sneaker. 5.56 to play here, opening night. British Basketball League on Sky Sports. Glad to have you with us, Todd Harris, Zania Stewart. And we've got ourselves a good game as the Newcastle Eagles got out to an early lead. The Sheffield Sharks weathered the early storm, got their lead up to almost double digits before the Newcastle Eagles came roaring back. And now we've got ourselves a five-point game. Sheffield just not going away. They're doing a great job, not collapsing. After the Eagles have made a run at them a time or two. Yeah, a really good job. This game is definitely a game of runs. Yep. Uh, both teams going back and forth. Sharks yep. managing to hold two possessions in a row. Deep range three, no one there, and it is Ramsey that comes away with the rebound. Here come the Sharks, pull up 15-footer, count it. Timeout, Mark yeah. 
Mark's, mm. Coach Mark's seen enough. And Coach Doodle has seen plenty. Yep. From their defense, I've spoken about it time and time again. Quick, uh, and they get out of the blocks, and then they get into that nice jump shot. And Back inside Virtue Motors Arena. After a timeout, as it looked yeah. like the Newcastle Eagles as Zingan needed to get their, uh, I don't, what's the best word? Act their together. mojo back. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, Stewart with his foot out of bounds and they get the turnover that they needed. Let me ask you this, as we see him on the sideline, there you see uh, Darius Defoe uh, not playing tonight. We saw him injured in a preseason game against USA Select. How big of a loss is that for the Eagles? I mean, you know, he doesn't put a lot of playing time in. Of course, the young man is 38 years old, but he's, he's kind of a, a stabilizing factor. Yeah, let's call him a fine wine, Todd, hey? You know, 30 years old, has played for 20 years, um, and a true vet, as we see Taj Green dancing. Hey, love that on the bike. Um, but going back to Darius Defoe, I just think um, he's such a big part of this Newcastle Eagles. The reason why they've kept him, he's a leader. Um, he's able to talk to the guys on and off. And this is why even though, you know, he can't play today, but you see him talking to his teammates constantly right. in their ear. I think he's such an important part. I did speak to Will, Will Neighbor before the game and he said he'll be out maybe a couple of weeks, but hopefully he'll be back soon. He slipped on uh, in that game. Well, we have a moment. Let's go back in the studio with Jeanette Ovi and Rob. Yeah, uh, thanks. I, I think it was interesting that Coach Studo started Todd Green in the second half. I thought his energy in the first half was very important for Newcastle to hang around. So Co Coach Studo said, hey, we're getting him in there right away, and they look a much better team with him on the floor. Yeah, I think, um, you know, every time Green's on the floor, you can definitely tell his presence. Um, he's turning into a leader on this sort of new, new team he's, he's amongst. Uh, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they're able to continue into the second half. Obviously, the Sheffield Sharks, they haven't taken their foot off the pedal, um, which I don't expect them to do. They've come in looking for a W today. Uh, and it's been interesting how things have played out so far. All right, thank you, gentlemen. More for you in the post-game show. You'll be with Jeanette Kwachi. We look forward to that as we get ready for an amazing season here in the British Basketball League on Sky Sports. 49-45, under 4.50 to play here in the third period. Neighbor has checked in for the Eagles, and that ball last touch by the Sheffield Sharks in number 45, Mark Stewart, who's back in the game, a young man out of Union City, Tennessee. Yeah, he's played some solid yeah. minutes, hasn't he, Stewart? You know, shot a nice three-point shot, playing tough defense. Um, it's just really excited and, uh, you know, take a bigger responsibility uh, in his game, but also for this team. Azania, how much do you see the coaches, uh, Coach Lyons and Coach Doodle, tightening up their rotations? Obviously, opening night, you want to give everyone a, a chance to get a little touch in. Uh, but how soon do you think before they tighten it down? Or do you think both these coaches will go deep? Yeah, I just think you, uh, you need to share the minutes, especially first game of the season. Sherry the ball and the Newcastle Eagles get the three out on the wing and now we've got ourselves a one point ball game 4-10 now to play in the third and that's what I wanted to see from the Eagles extra toughness greatness get that extra rebound and they get rewarded on on their uh, efforts the extra pass always works seems to work really well for Squads like the San Antonio Spurs and head coach Greg Popovich doing a good job there. Off the mark is Zach Walton. And here we go. The Eagles with an opportunity to take the lead. Can't convert on that long lead pass looking for Josh Ward Hibbert, who is streaking down the center. Yeah, the right idea. Um, but if he can't catch it, it's uh, the right thing for it to go out of bounds. But still, I think um, we've got ourselves a game. I really can't call this. I think at the beginning we were saying, oh, Newcastle Eagles, the same way Coach uh, Lyon said, on paper, 
uh, the Eagles look great, but you've got to play against the toughness of the Sharks. And I've just felt like um, they've really followed coach's lead and they, their defense has really got themselves going. I'm going to harp on it because I think if they do end up winning this game, they'll look back and say, hey, boys, if we're going to start this season, this is how we've got to play all year long. Defense. Defense. Final 345 of the third period with the fourth period still to come. One point ball game. The visiting Sheffield Sharks on top by one. Much more patient now on the offensive end as they work it around. Tough shot on the inside. Josh Ward Hibbert had two shark converging on him. Ball knocked away. And the foul, I believe, is going to be handed to one of the two sharks. And I don't think it was. Jabril out of Koya that's going to pick that one up. It looks like it might be Pipkins. Let's have a good, a good look. Uh, we get to see the replay, but that's a good oh no, rebound. Allen. That's a good rebound by Josh Ward Hibbert there. You know, was uh, with London Lions last season, has made the move over to Newcastle. Uh, known for his defense, but I just felt like, uh, especially last season, really stepped up. The Lions had some injuries, and he really uh, started to come in, uh, in his own in his offensive end. One point ball game now here on opening night, taken away in a absolute pocket being picked by Pipkins there. Pushes it back up to three. And the foul there on the answer back by Ricky McGill as he raced the entire length of the court. There were nothing but sharks back there waiting for him, but he has bailed out as the foul and the steals start to pick up. These are two teams, Azania, we knew coming in, known for their fast hands, excellent defense. Guard play is sensational on the perimeter. Yeah, big time. And I think Pipkins, uh, 10 points in that first half, gets subbed in, an instant offense right there. We see him uh, go straight to the... Uh, the layup and uh, is on 12 points. Instant offense for me. He's, he should be playing more, but you know, he's, he didn't start, he starts. Um, he'll be a real big factor. I think he's my favorite so far. Ricky McGill at the line, hits uh, the first, misses the second. Young man who played his college ball in the States out of Spring Valley, New York. The Iona Gales, former Plymouth Raider. Two point game, under three to go here in the third. Ramsey directing the traffic for the Sharks. Shot clock at three. Nice head fake. Off the mark. Zach Walton had about as good a look as you can get. Larry Austin now pushing the pace. Inside. Deep range three. Count it. Will Neighbor. 6'10", Will Neighbor. When he has his feet set, I know Mama Neighbor is going to be happy with that shot, and so is Newcastle. They needed that three-point shot, and who else? Will Neighbor steps up and drills it. Look at this. I mean, that is some range. The pride of gray shot England. Neighbor, uh, you know, and this is not a fluky thing, as Daniel, we talked about it. This guy is a good outside shooter. You know what else he's good at? Golf. He told me he has a handicap of six. I said, wow. There's a lot of guys this season uh, I've spoken to, and I said, hey, what do you like to do in your free time? They said, play golf. Oh. Well, right now, head coach Atiba Lyons is going to have to draw something up because that lead they had comfortably at six, eight, nine has now disappeared, and they trail by one. Well, it's going back and forth. I said it's too close to really cool. It's really about momentum. But right now, you have to look at the little plays, right? Like I said, the rebounding, the boxing out, um, the hustle plays, the free throws. It's going to be all the one percenters, I call them. The one percent means um, the extra things that isn't on the stat sheet. So that is, you know, the hustle, the tip, the uh, diving on the floor, uh, the extra rebounding, this is going to be really important because I just think this game is going to come down to the wire. 2.30 to play in the third period. It's a one-point game, and I'll tell you, it's been a topsy-turvy affair for the Newcastle Eagles as they have seen themselves in the lead and running their offense to perfection, and then they've struggled at times. Yeah, I think they have. I think both teams have gone, you know, struggled, but I think uh, it's going to be the defensive end, but I'm really liking the Sharks. I feel like they're playing tough, and Ramsey. Ramsey is uh, playing really good defense on Larry Austin Jr., making it very difficult. He's a great scorer, uh, Austin Jr., but not so much when you've got Ramsey right underneath you. 
Right on cue from what Ovi and Rob had to say just a short time ago, and the Newcastle Eagles have responded. Deep range three there, coming off the mark. That's a tough shot. Just buries it, and they needed that one. Well done as Parker Stewart just hits the three that Coach Lyons needed. Why I think um, that is beautiful is because it was in rhythm. Right. It was in their play. It was the right shot. They knew who they were looking for, and he comes down and executes. And they get the steal on the defensive end. They were unable to take that one securely. Ball knocked away off his leg, and back come the Sharks now. So just when you think the Sharks may be folding up and uh, calling it a night, not so much. Looking for back-to-back -back threes. Don't get it there, and Austin gets the rebound. See what Newcastle could come up here now. Stewart. Had the lead, yeah. now up by two. It looks like a foul away from the ball. Sorry, uh, Stewart as uh, Stewart oh, and oh, Green. Hello. A little chat, and there's action away from the initial foul. Nobody wants to see the referee, cameraman. Let's see the action, please. Taj here. Green was not taken kindly. Stewart's good defense. He's moving his feet. He's uh, getting around, and Green didn't like it. And here they go. They face up. A little masculine energy, you know, flexing. They love that. And Do you think they're talking about where to go after <laughs> the game, having dinner in Newcastle? Is that, is that the discussion? You don't think so? No, I don't think okay. so. You but never um, did that, did you? never got in anyone's face. No, and by really the way, there's a really good chipper down the street. No, I'm know. a really lovely person on and off the court. I don't like to do that. You don't like confrontation? No, I don't. You're a good soul. Yeah, I play honest. And uh, I think honest defense was Stuart. He was moving his feet. Sure. He was being physical, but in the right way. And uh, Green didn't like it. So Taj Green will go to the line with a minute 29 to play. He's already got nine points. Make it 10. So double figures. Nice pickup for the Newcastle Eagles as Mark Studel went out and said, you know, this is a guy that could certainly help us. The former Manchester Giant said, I think I'd like to play with the Eagles. Yeah, and he needs two more rebounds for a double-double. That's a great way to start the season, but it's not any good if they don't get the win. Right. So yet again, tied game. All even at 54, and these final 120 is going to be key because you're going to want to take that momentum into that final stanza of the fourth period still to come here on Sky Sports. Opening night, British Basketball League. Beautiful drive in there, and the bump is going to be on Will Neighbor as Neighbor just caught the hip of that much quicker guard as he drove on the inside line, and that'll send Pipkins to the line. Pipkins doing a great job there and taking advantage of his speed, but Neighbor did a good job of recovery, just not good enough. Yeah, and if I was neighbor, I would use my length more, you know, keep a hand so it uh, forces him and then it uh, kind of keeps your feet away and you'll be able to move. But uh, Pipkins doesn't hit that free throw as the crowd are happy about that, but uh, is doing well. I think he's uh, an incredible player. It's yeah. going to be very exciting to watch the season and uh, maybe in the All-Star game. Let's talk about that. We've Looking added that, that back. I'm excited. This is a ball, so he stays at 12 points, and we stay even at 54. Final minute to play here coming up in the third from Veritu Motors Arena on opening night. And did the Eagles have something to answer back inside? Yes, they do. Nice place to go when you can. Larry Austin Jr., he delivers. And way to stay with it because Ramsey was so uh, close from stealing that ball, and he just uh, was strong and finished at the rim. Working around the outside. Once again, that isolation play. This time, Neighbor doesn't fall for it, doesn't foul Pipkins. Back come the Eagles, driving to the lane, up and in. And a foul from behind. And more chatting. Zach Walton. Let's have a look at this. Larry Austin Jr. doing what he does best. Puts his head down, gets to the rim, takes a couple of bumps. And, you have a problem um, with that play? No. I think it's just a tough play. Yeah. Obviously, it's a tight game. Uh, both teams want to win, are doing everything they can, and it just gets chippy. Yeah. Um, but it's a good game, and this is what you want. But Austin Jr., um, we, he kind of, you know, got a little bit silent uh, in that f first start of the third quarter, but now he's starting to warm up. He's seen the ball go through the net, and he knows his team needs him. He needs to be offensively um, dominant or, you know. Our officials are going to talk about this. I think the question is, was it a goaltend? Was there contact made when the ball was in the cylinder on the rim? 
Oh, and we got it. So we got a technical being pulled out. Coach Studel picks up the technical. He wants clear. Everyone wants clarification right now. So Coach Studel is going to go over and told what he received the technical for, and then it looked like it was the two that they called on Zach Walton on the trail from behind. We'll get you a burgundy wow, t-shirt. You, you could be a referee. To sort it all out. Yeah, this final 32 seconds of the third is becoming quite a conundrum. No harm, no foul done there, although the league will not like Mark Stuhl getting technical fouls like that. Must have said the magic word or a combination of things. Well, they've uh, subbed out Neighbor for Joshua Hivett, I think just for the defensive right. end, uh, because Neighbor's had to have his hands full with Pipkins, where now if you put Josh Ward Hibbert on him, can be, you know, the same size, same strength, yep. same speed. I think that's a good sub. You trade a 6'4 for a 6'10, and you're going to get much better, to Zania's point, vertical, horizontal defense from Josh Ward Hibbert, guarding a much quicker player. So it's 56-54, Newcastle. Has taken the lead. The final 32 seconds of the third period. That one well off the mark as soon as it left his hand. And both free throws missed. Yeah. And also... Um, Technical missed. Yeah. And Ramsey missed his free throw. Both teams not executing at the free throw line. Shot clock at five. Backdoor cut off the hands. Walton unable to handle the pass that came in from Rotino. Now the Eagles can play for the final shot. Deep range three comes up a little bit short. Probably could have taken one or two more dribbles. Got a better look. But now we are set for a great final period. Two-point game here in Newcastle. Back in Newcastle, opening night, British Basketball League. Glad to have you with us, Todd Harris, alongside Azania Stewart. All right, coach, you look at this final period. If you're the Newcastle Eagles, you had a lead early, you lost it, you came back now. What do they need to do to finish this thing off? Yeah, I think uh, they need to finish their layups and free throws. Um, and then also just being physical. I think you need to match the Sharks' physicality. Um, and also it's going to be on the defensive end. I'm going to talk about it again. How about for the Sheffield Sharks? What do they need to do? I think the Sheffield Sharks go to Ramsey. I think he's been great. Pipkins has been instant offense. Um, and just take their time. They've been so good at taking their time and executing their offense. Tough fadeaway shot there and contact on the baseline. Rebound taken away by Atacoya. Nice drive on the lane, pull up jumper and in. So look at this. Back come the Sharks with somewhat of a set play as we set it back to the studio. Ovi and uh, Rob, what are you guys seeing and what do you think the Eagles need to do to sharpen things up and get this victory? Perimeter to shoot the ball. Yeah, I think for me, it's shooting the ball better. I think both teams have to shoot the ball better from the perimeter. Both struggling. Three threes uh, so far for Newcastle, uh, five for, for the Sharks. So I think the team that shoots it better from the perimeter will have a much better chance to win. Yeah, I think uh, shooting, you know, is definitely a factor here. Um, but for the Sheffield Sharks, I think they're going to have to lean on a continuity. They're going to have to be able to go to the half court um, and execute. I haven't seen quite as much execution as maybe I would have loved, but it is early in the season, so it'll be interesting to see who can win the Battle of Styles. All right, great point. Glad to have Ovi Soko and Rob Pop. I don't know, Stra in the studio with us, the head coach of the Leicester Riders. Free throws, Azania, continue to bother both teams as we will stay at 58 now as the pace has really slowed down. And this is where, have you done your work? Do you have your offensive set? Do you know where you're supposed to be? Can you execute? Yeah, I think that's such a great point. And there we are, execution down to the tee. Thank you very much. Just right on on time. And uh, Del, Del Pesh, Pesh. yeah. I think Pipkins here has been giving them problems. If I'm Sheffield Shark, get the ball to him. Um, Johnson, you know, ran him off the line, but he wants to get to this jump shot. 
Quick hands once again on display there, knocked away by Larry Austin Jr. Worth noting out that head coach Mark Studel has gone deep onto his bench. Pretty much everyone has played. The last man to get an opportunity, number nine, Devin Whitfield, has checked into the game, the 6'5 guard out of Lipscomb, Alabama. Well, I think that's important. He wants his players to play fast, um, but you can keep them fresh when you keep your rotation from your bench into your starters. Terrell Allen triggers the offense. Long three, that one off the mark from Parker Stewart. Hustles back on the defense. Here come the Eagles. Wow, that's a tough step to guard. Johnson behind the back, crosses over, it gets the contact and draws the foul. He can do it all, you know, he does uh, shoot the three, but he can get to the rim and that's what he's done and, and that's kind of what his team needs. Um, they're up two, can he make his free throws? Um, obviously he had a great season. He played in Germany last season and uh, played with um, the Gladiators, but they yeah. were the Rocks back then in 2001-22 season. So he has had some, you know, some experience in the British Basketball League. Happy to be back. Um, I just think he's a really great guy and all-rounded, you know, can shoot the three, like I said, gets to his shots in the jump shot, but then also uh, can get to the rim. So the former Gladiator steps up and knocks both of them down just when the Eagles needed it most. A good look at their bench right now as their players looking on and back come more pressure. So Coach Studel not happy with just the even flow and not letting the Sharks walk the ball up and get themselves into offensive set. Applies a little bit of token pressure there and backs it off. Here we go. Sharks desperately needed a basket. Now they find themselves down by four under 7.55 to play in the ball game. Inside, Cook rotates, and they're going to call him this time. If Cook went up at the same time instead of uh, pausing, if he looked, if he just took this hit and went up, but because he waited, it's so easy for the referee to call it. But well done, Taj Green, putting your body on the line. Take that charge, take that big hit, and uh, he causes the turnover for the Sharks. Amazing defense from him. And in the foul situations right now, the Sharks starting to pick up Quite a few more at 21-14, so some of their key players are going to have to play really smart here, especially Bennett Cook. I hate him taking charges. Oh. I, I didn't take too many. Fun, right? No. It's a long way down. <laughs> Nobody likes especially to fall over for fun. Four. <laughs> Whitfield checking into the game. That ball's kicked away. Nine-on-nine -nine crime, Jordan Retino. A man out of Castro Valley, California, played his ball at the University of San Francisco. His third year with the Sharks. It's been kind of quiet in the second half. If you want anyone to step up from the outside, I think it's going to be that young man. Yeah, I think so. He just needs to get some uh, good open looks to the basket. Talk about open looks. Doesn't get much better than that. Big, big hit. Had his feet set behind the three-point line. A great answer for Newcastle. You know what's great? He hasn't played most of the game, and he comes in at the very end, and he delivers. Do your job, and Tito can't answer back. No, it wasn't Tito. My apologies on the outside. That was Stewart. Deep range three again. That's a shot they can get any time, and now it looks like the Sharks are starting to rush things, playing right into the playbook of the Eagles down the lane and not up and in. Looked like it was going to be a sure thing. Taj Grant has a point blank opportunity, can't finish it. Another deep range three, this time it is RJ Edelrock. Young man from London by way of Utah State, 25 years of age, and that was a huge shot for the Coach Lions and the Sharks. Yeah, the game getting a little bit scrappy. Ball knocked away. Shot clock now at five. Fans help out the home fan, and I guarantee he called glass. Larry Austin Jr. Got a lot of players, Azania, making your life hard right now, because who's going to be <laughs> the MVP? I know, a lot falls on my shoulders. Um, it's so close to call, but I gotta give it maybe to Pipkins coming off the bench. He's been solid. Mm. Uh, comes away with it. You're 
starting to see it get away from the Sharks now. The lead is seven. Their guards continue to attack the rim. This time it's kicked out. And stepped on the line. Looks like Larry Austin Jr. was too close and stepped out on the line. The official's right on top of it. So 5.26 to play in the game. Newcastle on top, 67 to 60. Yeah, I think it's just a, a really wonderful game. I think it's going to come down to the wire. So I'm going to wait. Okay. I'm going to wait my turn and, uh, and really just see because it has been waves, you know, yeah. uh, the, the Sharks have made a push. Eagles have made a push. Now, obviously, Eagles up seven, but here come the Sharks. Both teams with two timeouts. The draw on the baseline and gets the fall. And RJ Rock, who came in and has got two big buckets now for the Sharks. Newcastle taking their time, walking the ball up. Del Pesh. Hands it back to Johnson. Johnson trying to draw on the double team. Shot clock at three, drives the lane, and he's going to get bailed out. And Dole Ramsey had him. I mean, he had him dead to rights with the shot clock. He was going to have to put up a tough shot, Azania, and he got the foul. Yeah, and bails him out. He's playing such great defense. We'll step aside. We've got a good one here in Newcastle. Opening, opening night of the opening night, Newcastle on top by five. 67-62, 4.30. Shot clock at two, had to hoist up a tough one, and they're going to wave that off. It's going to say travel. because that was a tough shot. We get the pleasure of watching it again, and I'm going to say it's not a travel. He picked up his yeah. dribble and then Spun took... Off the pivot. Yeah. Yep. That would have been huge. Huge. That would have been an eight-point lead had that counted. As it stands with 4.32 to play. It's like a technical foul was called. And this time, Yvonne Ramsey hits it. Big shot, though, by Jordan Johnson. Mm. And you know Coach Strudel is going to be so the upset. Yeah, the foul shot and possession. So a big opportunity here for the Sheffield Sharks. Defense. Defense. Walking him down. Oh, right down the lane. Defense comes, not soon enough. Terrell Allen with a huge bucket for the visiting Sharks. Two-point game now. Massive bucket, Todd. Absolutely could have been an arm one. Comes down on the left-hand side, finishes it. This is going to come down to the wire. We're coming down up to four minutes left of play. McGill. Four seconds on the shot clock, and they're going to get the foul on Ramsey. And it'll be three shots for Jordan Johnson as he was in the act of shooting a three from range. And listen, this year the referees have been definitely told, look at this, shooter, you can't hit him. You have to let him land safely. Could actually... Maybe they talked about the kick out, though. Yeah, oh, the kick out also. But if it's too much, they're saying yeah. they're going to get the offensive player. But it's been a emphasis for the referees. They have to uh, be protect able to the shooter, yeah, yeah. protect the shooter. The shooter must be able to, one, land safely, and two, uh, no contact with his shooting arm. So Jordan Johnson needs these next two to give them a little bit of breathing room already with 12 points on the night and four assists. It's that one. So now it's a three-point game. This will make it a two-possession game if you can hit this one with under four minutes to play. 357 opening night, British Basketball League 2023. Welcome back. Gets it. Really important free throws. I told you that it's going to come down to this wire, hitting two out of three. 
gives them a little bit of a cushion, but there's a lot of basketball to play, Todd. 69 to 65. Let's see what the Sharks can do now. Every possession is going to be extremely valuable. This is where you go to your very best plays, your very best playmakers. Terrell Allen out on the floor. They go down baseline, spin on the inside. Nothing there, turns to the outside, can't get it to fall. Great job of rebounding there as Josh Ward Hibbert, the former London Lion, comes in and gets a huge defensive rebound. And the lead, wow, too easy. Michael Del Pesh. Really good finish at the rim. Josh Ward Hibbert with the box out to get that rebound. Very and very important. And they get the score. Do we feel like the Sharks are kind of tightening up, maybe? Yeah, just a little bit. They know every possession now. It's got to come away with something. That three would have been monstrous. Nothing doing. And they're still running. That's what's so... I mean, they just stay who they are. They could go to four corners and run clock, and they're not going to do it. That drive off the line. It went off the hip of the Shark, but the foul's going to be called before. I think that's an easy call, especially when you make a big hacking slap yeah. down. It's easy for the referees. Look, let's have a look. Mm. We get to see the um, replay, but it's difficult to make it in that snap of a moment. And uh, we all think we're referees at one point in our lives, either sitting here or if you're a fan. So 25-year-old RJ Edelrock, a 6'3 guard out of London, played his college ball in the States at Utah State up in Logan, Utah. Better like snow and cold weather if you're going to Logan, Utah, home of the Aggies. Martino comes out. Big. Hits it. I, yeah, ice in his veins. I felt yeah. like he's played some really lovely minutes for the Shark, just coming in, playing hard, hitting his shots, staying in his lane, and playing very well. And remember, as Jeanette Kwachi pointed out, the Sheffield Sharks Arena is not going to be ready for them to come home until October. So right. they've got, uh, they're got they going to be road warriors for a while, getting mm -hmm. used to the hostile crowds. Hits both of them. But boy, when they do go home to yeah. their new arena, that's going to be, be nice. exciting. Four-point game, 2.45 to play in this one. Eagles now looks like they're going to burn a little bit of clock. Shot clock still at nine. Beautiful alley-oop, and there you go. First highlight of the night as Taj Green delivers. My, oh my, look at this. Serve it on a platter. Let Green go get it. And absolutely rocks the rim and shows off why not. A great answer. And uh, wow, yeah. that's what he's known for, right? Highlight plays. Can I give a little love out to Ricky McGill? That, that was a beautifully set up play. Drew the defense in, and when they came to him, he saw his man streaking on the baseline, and you got to deliver. Taj Green, oh wow. 13 points, 10 rebounds on the night. You know what I'm excited about? I see our, our colleague Derek in that corner with the cheerleaders. We know he's going to have that on a highlight reel for us tomorrow morning on any social media, because Taj Green, yet again. Makes his job easy. Yeah, sure does. And the momentum back to Newcastle. Okay. Now you're getting down to must-have points on every possession. You cannot have empty possessions here as we are under 2.20 to play. Outside, three-point on its way, hard off the back. Ball comes in, and it's going to go over the Sharks. I thought there might be a loose ball foul there because it looked like Josh Ward Hibbert was perfectly positioned there, and the ball is knocked away. Sharks will get another crack at it with a shot clock reset at 14 seconds. I'm going to have to tell Mark Strudel he's going to have to undo a button because he's going to have a heart attack over there on the sideline. You're afraid he's going to overheat? Yeah. Oh, that ball just thrown away on the wrong page with Adekoya, and that leads to almost another dunk, and that is going to send at number 55, Taj Green. Looks like he is hopefully not cramping up again. Good hustle back play there by RJ Edelrock to Listen. prevent it, and there it is, the stretching out. Yeah, he needs, I don't know, some bananas, uh, some water with salt in it, because obviously he's got bunnies, and it's early. Early season, right? Oh, come. I mean, I was surprised to see him right back out in the yeah. uh, third quarter, which was really ha I was happy to see. But uh, yeah, his recovery after today's game is going to be so vital. I think uh, a lot of people don't 
you know, put so much love on that. You have to stretch, you have to ice down, you have to recover, and also you have to eat well. Hydration is going to be so important for um, Taj Green. You know the most important person is right now for the Eagles? Let me hear it. Vicky Percy, <laughs> team physio. Okay, yes. And they have her work cut out for her because uh, he's going to need some serious work, get some fluids in him, and get those muscles loosened up just a little bit. But what a night for him. What a warrior. Knocks down two huge free throws here as we are now just over two minutes to play in this game. And it looks like the Eagles are starting to pull away with this one. Eight point lead now for the homestanding Newcastle Eagles on opening night. Martino goes to the inside. Adequoya. Pipkins looking for someone, decides to hoist up a three himself, rattles around, can't get it to fall. That shot, I feel like, would have fallen in the first half. Yeah. Just but, not going the way of the Sharks. Yeah, disappointed. But also, he had his favorite jump shot a little bit earlier in the shot clock and decided to pass on the ball. Skip past the outside. That was a dangerous pass. Josh Ward here handled it, and he's fouled by RJ Adel Rock. Didn't want to get up that baseline. So the Sheffield Sharks now in the bonus. Newcastle still with two fouls to get. Both teams still with two timeouts. 91 seconds to play in this one. Yeah, and here's the foul. Just that little bump. And uh, Josh mm. Ward-Hibbert will go to the free throw line. If the Eagles do hold on, Azania, and I'm mm -hmm. not saying they're going to because it's still a lot of ball to be played. If you're a team of Lions, the head coach of the Sharks, she did a lot of great things tonight. Where do you think they missed their opportunity to get this road win? Well, um, I just think executing, finishing down the line, but also they got a bit tight here in the last three, four minutes. And that will just come with the season, right? Game one of the season. How do you answer? Um, I think Newcastle did a wonderful job managing to kind of settle the nerves, steady the ship and uh, made it a 10-point game. They had the huge highlight plays from Taj Green, which I think I'm going to give it to him for the MVP of go. the game. I was just about to ask you, who are you voting? Yeah, but I think also it's a nice um, start to the season to win in front of your fans. Wow, a lovely uh, moment for Newcastle Eagles. But like we said, there's a minute and a half, and here goes Ramsey. Shot up, shot off the mark. Larry Austin Jr. takes the rebound. They come back running. Do they stop the clock? Yes, they do. They Excuse me, do they run clock? Yes, they do. As Jordan Johnson decides, okay, we'll back it out a little bit. Good idea. Ball knocked away. It'll stay with the Eagles. Shot clock now at a 10-point lead, 107 to play in this ball game. Wow, what a tale of two quarters because really the second quarter belonged to Sheffield. The third quarter kind of belonged to Sheffield, but the first and fourth, I think he might have to give it to Newcastle. Yeah. No foul called there as the shot clock would have expired and ooh, don't want to foul on that. A potential of a and one. No harm meant there as Malcolm Del Pesh does the gentlemanly thing, but that will stop the clock at 55 seconds. I really like their shark. You can see their teamwork though. They're coming together, huddling, potentially yep. putting in their yep. uh, full court press to try and turn over the ball. The clock is not their friend um, and they've got to make up 10 points yep. in a very quick time, you know, under a minute. You hit both of these, you get a steal, you hit a three, you cut it in half. Well, I've seen wild things happen. Oh yeah. This is the British Basketball League. Hey. Nine point lead with 55.7 seconds. You're a busy young lady this weekend. What is another game that you're really looking forward to? Do you think we're going to learn something special about a team that maybe is not Ooh. quite on the radar? I mean, London Lions, obviously, the defending champions, but there's probably a game out there, and I'll let you think about it for a second. Well, I'm ready, actually. Bristol Flyers. Oh, there you go. Quite excited for. Boom. Well, Sheffield Sharks falling apart. Todd, in this last four to five minutes, I think. And now they're just forced into long-range jumpers. There you go. They needed that minus the Taj Green dunk. Ball stripped away, and they're going to say it's a kick ball off the foot, I believe, of Jordan Johnson. So nice defense there by Jalen Pipkins, and this one's not over yet. Johnson saying to the referee, <laughs> grab my arm. But a full, complete game. I think uh, 
uh, Sheffield Sharks play, will be happy with yeah. three and a half, but at the end of the day, we're not happy because we haven't uh, completed the job and won the game. Tino off the mark. That's the guy that we want to have take that shot. He's such a good outside shooter. Just couldn't get it to fall. This one's going to be a little more difficult. That one off, and Taj Green rips away the rebound. Now just looking for space. Dribble out of it. Oh, and off the hands. Ricky McGill was ready and waiting for it, and it just goes through his hands. He's going to... Yeah, still good. The ball's still good. They're thinking there's a bit of sweat on it, yeah. but nope. Just didn't catch it. But either way, we'll clap to uh, Johnson. Wonderful game today. Yeah, Jordan Johnson, such a steady force. Excellent defender. Timeout on the court. 19.4 seconds to play. And the situation is this. Sheffield's going to need a near miracle. They're going to need back-to-back -back threes and a couple steals and some help because, as Zinga pointed out, with seven points deficit, the clock is not their friend. Absolutely. Um, kind of like feeling uh, a little sad for the Sharks because I felt like they've played wonderfully. Um, they did a good job battling on the boards. They won that. Pipkins, for me, I think needs to step up even more. He's uh, definitely a scoring machine, um, but maybe needs to take a bit more responsibility. Sometimes, you know, finding that balance of passing, but right now you need to score and you need to score quickly. And you need to identify soon. I mean, this is the first day of the new season, but identify soon who your guy is. Who is that guy in right. crunch time that says, okay, we need a bucket. Who's going to be the guy? All right. Let's, I'm being a bit hard on, on uh, the Sharks. This is game one. You'll right. learn a lot. You'll um, evolve. Um, and, you know, this is it. This, this season is going to go all the way down to May. Uh, it's a very long, hard season. And um, Mark, for sure, is definitely the redness out of his neck and face. Has cooled <laughs> down a little bit as his team has a little bit of a cushion. But I have seen crazier things. So they need to just make sure they get this defensive stop. Yeah. And if you're the Sharks, uh, I'm sure Coach Lyons has just drawn up the play yep. to get them that three. Two really doesn't help their cause. They need a three. Great defense there. Final option on the wing. Got a good look at it, did Pipkins. They'll get another shot at it, too, with Ramsey. Ramsey kicks it over. So three looks, and they come away with nothing as Parker Stewart unable to hit that. And that'll about do it as the final seconds run off the clock. Opening night is in the books. British Basketball League is back on Sky Sports. And it's the Newcastle Eagles that come from behind and get the victory. Boy, oh boy, a wonderful game and a great moment there, Taj. High five in a fan. I just think this is a wonderful start to the season for the Newcastle Eagle fans on their feet, clapping their team. No doubt they're going to need them all season long. Fantastic game for the Eagles. They were definitely tested by the Sharks, yeah. but they put 40 minutes of basketball together. 79-72 is your final. So the opening game of this season is done, and it is the Newcastle Eagles that come from behind. MVP goes the way, and this was almost an easy one for Taj Green, a double-double right out of the gate. And I guess you're thinking, yeah, that was a good deal getting him on the squad. Yes, yeah, 17 points and 11 rebounds and one assist. I felt like he had an all-round game. He also had a, a cramp. I was really happy to see him back in the game, and I bet you uh, the Eagles were to a great pickup for, uh, off the off season, uh, he was with the Giants, and this year he is looking strong for the Newcastle Eagles as they get their first win and clap to the crowd. Newcastle is one and zero oh in this new season. Once again, the final score 79-72. We send it back to the studio and Jeanette Quachi. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Azania. And what a game we start with, this British Basketball League. And I guess a massive amount of frustration for Sheffield Sharks, but for Newcastle Eagles, their first win, Rob Pasanostro, since 2020 on game day one. That's a good way to start. Great way to start at home. I thought Green was awesome. I thought he was a difference maker tonight. Yeah, and when you think about this, Ovi, and what this then means for Newcastle Eagles, it does set them up, doesn't it? Yeah, I think this just sets the tone for the rest of the season. Okay, well, we can head down to Drew. He is with Taj Green. 
Taj, the Sheffield Sharks dominated inside. You guys didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but you still got the job done. I know it was an ugly game. We faced a little adversity, but at the same time, it's about how you bounce back from it. We bounced back. We stayed composed. You know, we played with our energy. We had some ups and downs, but we came out with a win. One and no start the season off. That's good. And that's a great way to start. And there was a lot of hype coming into this game. All the British basketball was eyes on this matchup. What was the message sent to the rest of the league? I mean, it's, it's no message. We're going to play our game regardless. Like, we ain't trying to, you know, bring no message to nobody. We're going to play Newcastle Eagles ball all times. You know, we're going to play with energy. We might talk a little junk, but that's us. We're going to keep it basketball. We're not talking junk to, you know, interact, but we, it's basketball talk. But we're just going to keep playing with energy. And we saw you pick up a niggle in preseason, catch a cramp in the first half there, and kind of walk gingerly a little bit late. You guys got an expedition in Europe. How do you plan to keep yourself healthy? I mean, just, just stay healthy. Like you said, you know, do the right stuff to, you know, recover. Um, do the proper treatment and just stay hydrated. That's why I probably caught the crown, eating all the hairy bowls, tan, tan fastic. So, you know, that kind of probably played a little part, but you know, drink water. <laughs> well, you guys had a fantastic performance. You look like you had a lot of fun out there. Great job. Congratulations on the win. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Drew. What a game it was for Taj Green. Like we say, game day one win for the Eagles. Their first in three years. They really turned around a game which they really had to warm up into. I think that's fair to say, Rob. And in the end, a nine-point lead and a frustrated Sharks team. Yeah, I thought it well, wasn't pretty tonight. I think you could see it's early season for both teams. The execution wasn't there at times. But I like how Newcastle stayed in the game, and I like how they improved their defense. You know, first half, they struggled on the defensive end. But the second half, they came out, and Sheffield really struggled to score. And when you look at the three-point shooting, that was a problem for Sheffield last year. Again, tonight, they really struggled from the three-point line. But the key stat there on the board was the free-throw line. Uh, Newcastle on the free-throw line really hurt the Sharks there and for you Ovi when you look at that there you know it was seven points in the end overall at half time 35 40 for the Sheffield Sharks maybe a bit disappointed they weren't able to hold on to that I definitely think they're going to be a little bit disappointed um, we're able to see where they might have sort of fallen apart from time to time but I think consistency throughout the game uh, and getting the new guys fully acclimated is going to be big for them moving forward it will be big for them moving forward and Drew has got more action courtside he's with Mark Stutel Coach, it wasn't pretty, but it's always great to learn after a win. What do you take away from that matchup? Uh, yeah, ugly game of basketball. Uh, probably a game that's representative to being at the start of the season. Credit to Sheffield. I thought the game was more their style for the majority, more than it was our style. And, and that's a credit to Sheffield. I'm proud of the, my guys and the way that we made some key plays from, from everybody at key times in the game. And yeah, we have to learn. We have a long way to go, but yeah, we have to learn and get better. You were averaging over 100 points in the preseason, obviously 79 points tonight. What part of your game were you encouraged about tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think we held them to 32 points uh, defensively in the second half. Um, I felt even halfway through the third, I think we were still down five at a timeout, but I felt that level of defense was better than it was at any point in the first half. I didn't like our focus in the first quarter. I thought, you know, we were a little bit rushed and hurried and a little bit excited. I don't think we did a great job in our assignments. I thought the guys did a great job of like uh, composing themselves at half time and playing the level of defense in the second half that we needed to. Well, that's a great to the start to the season. Congratulations, coach. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Drew. Obviously there with a very happy Mark Shooter, Ovi. And when you look at someone like Taj Green, we've been speaking about him, like I say, at the start of the game, rightly so, during the game as well. And what a, what a weird game for him, is the, the cramp and everything else. But then he did come back and was a key player in making sure that Newcastle Eagles got the win. Yeah, he was terrific tonight, you know. I, again, I, I was surprised he wasn't able to start the game or he didn't start in the starting lineup. However, his impact um, cannot go unnoticed. Mm. Huge play here in transition. Uh, the athleticism that we alluded to a lot earlier, um, but the energy he brings, the energy he brings at all times throughout the game, here going backcourt for a big time play. Uh, yeah, he's a big piece for these guys. Yeah, and you can see he's confident, isn't he? So driven, determined in that Rob. I thought he got going when they were talking to him a little bit too. I thought that, <laughs> that talking got him going. Um, and I think, you know, that's a message to the league. Maybe keep quiet with him a little bit because I thought he got fired up when they started to talk. He had he a great did. game. He did definitely get fired up and he made a difference, but someone also made a difference, Larry Austin Jr. He was really good tonight and again, a big part of the, of, of the result. Well, he has a lot of respect around the league. Yeah. Larry Austin is the type of 
guy that even when you're going up against him, you admire how hard he plays. And he plays the game with a joy and an energy that the fans like, that the teammates like. And so he's the type of guy that um, even when, you know, he's not getting the ball a lot, he can make things happen, makes plays, finds the ball, whatever, wherever it is. Yeah. I hope it's quite difficult, though, at this stage of the season to, to make real sense of what things could look like. I mean, it's game one of, of, of hundreds of games that we're going to be showing across the British Basketball League. But actually, you know, for, for a lot of fans, they'll be thinking, OK, this is a good start for us. Yeah, I think it was a good job. I think they've done really well. I think, um, you know, Austin obviously impacted yeah. the way he could. And I think all of the players, uh, as they work through the season, they're going to find their feet and understand how they can impact winning. OK, well, if you're a Newcastle Eagles fan, take a look at this. Screenshot it. You are right there at the top of the league. One game played, one game won, and you pick up all the points there. So, of course, across the weekend, this will absolutely change. Lots of fixtures happening. Again, tomorrow, the Flyers and the Patriots, 7.20. Riders against Phoenix, 7.35. And on Saturday, it is the Surrey Scorchers up against the London Lions at 10 to 5. And on Sunday, the Giants against Caledonia Gladiators. That's at 5.50. All available on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. And I mean... For you, Coach Rob, you will be out there tomorrow getting ready. And I'm sure that's really what your appetite. Yeah, I'm excited. Watching that game, I was jealous. I'd love to be out there on opening night. But um, I think everyone around the league is excited for the season. I think when you look up and down the table, there are a lot of dangerous teams this year with a lot of weapons. I think as the season goes on, teams will grow. Yeah, absolutely. And for you, Ovi, this has really set the tone, hasn't it? And Newcastle Eagles are the ones that a lot of people are saying are going to challenge the London Lions. Uh, 100%. Uh, Newcastle done a great job of setting the tone tonight and I think uh, it'll be interesting to see the new faces um, and who's improved at what over the summer. Okay, well, for you both, thank you very much for joining me. I've had a great time. It is a brilliant start to the season. The Newcastle Eagles take that win over the Sheffield Sharks, their first win since 2020 on game day one. Will it continue? We'll wait to see. Welcome to Inside the Paint. That a new season of the British Basketball League has begun with the Newcastle Eagles beating the Sheffield Sharks 79 to 72. So let's take a look at what happened in this first game. The first half saw both teams fighting hard with players constantly being sent to that free throw line. And when it came to scoring, Newcastle, they really struggled to finish, allowing Sheffield to pull ahead with a five point lead. However, it was the Eagles that fought back in the second half, making the game too close to court at the end of the third quarter. But soon after, the Sheffield Sharks started to crumble, allowing Taj Green and the Eagles to pull ahead and secure the first win of the season. Well, joining me in the studio, we have former London Lion Ovi Soko and head coach of Leicester Riders, it is Rob Paternostro. For both of you, an interesting night, let's just say that. Coach Rob, you were watching with really interested eyes and seeing how both of these teams got on. What do you make of tonight's game? Well, I thought the free throw line tells the story. 31 for 39 from the free throw line for Newcastle Eagles. You put a team to the line that many times, you're going to struggle to lose. So Sheffield fouled way too much. And I also think Newcastle's defense in the second half picked up. They really limited Sheffield's good looks. Not the prettiest of games for both teams, but Newcastle will be happy with the W. They will be happy with that W. They've done a lot of recruitment over the summer, Ovi. And for them, they had to really kind of make their mark and sit out their store, didn't they? Yeah, no, I think it was really important um, for the Newcastle Eagles tonight. Uh, 
rather than necessarily winning by 20 points or a blowout, I think they'll learn and grow much more from these sort of early encounters of other teams around the league. Um, and it just sort of reminds them how far they have to go, how much they have to sort of stay switched on and stay engaged uh, moving forward. And as a coach, Rob, you're not, you don't have to get too forensic, do you, at this, this, this time of the season? Absolutely not. It's the first game. Yeah, it's the first game. And I think, you know, this is an early start for us uh, now. Usually it's the end of September. So, you know, the conditioning's not there yet. The offenses aren't in yet. But um, the good teams find a way. And they, I think you'll be happy as Newcastle to find a way tonight. They absolutely do find a way. Um, in the commentary box for us tonight, it was Azania Stewart and Todd Harrison. And Todd, you called that game. What were your thoughts, especially on them being quite different halves? Well, I think it was really interesting, Jeanette, as we, as we talk about this game, as how Newcastle came out as in, we knew they were going to come out fast, and they did that. But it was the way that Sheffield hung around and really took control of that game. As Coach said, um, you know, they kind of made it their own. They made it their identity and forced Newcastle to make some changes. Yeah, they had to make some changes and answer really quick. And I just felt like I, I voted him MVP. Taj Green was just the game difference. He was a dunking machine, but also playing great defense. Um, and they just built off that energy. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like that was the game changer for them. How about Jalen Pipkins, who had a great game for the Sharks. He came in with 16 points, really drove their offense. And I think offensively, you look forward, this is a team that's going to put up some big points and they're going to get a lot of wins. Yeah, I think Sheffield Shark, if they go back and they look at the scout and, you know, they look back at the video. Um, there's a lot of learning lessons. Yeah. They played fantastic for about three and a half quarters. And now they've just got to put, you know, a full solid 40 minutes together. But that's a good looking team. It is the first game of the season. They will be disappointed. But that disappointment ignites fire. Coach, the team of Lions has got a good one this year in Sheffield. They've got a great one in Newcastle for head coach Mark Studel. It's going to be exciting throughout this year to watch both these teams and see how they fare. Right now, let's send it back to Jeanette. Thank you. Thank you very much to Azania and to Todd. And like we say, it's a busy old weekend, the Flyers and the Patriots. Our coverage starts at 7.20 p.m. tomorrow. What are you looking forward to in that game there, Ovi? I mean, I want to see how the Flyers look this year. I think last year they were a surprise. Um, but the biggest thing uh, after doing well is expectations. That's what you have to sort of live up to the next year. And they've changed a lot of pieces. So it'll be interesting to see how they look this year. Yeah, and I'm conscious I don't want to keep you here too long. The Riders against the Phoenix. You're going to be courtside very soon. And for you, again, just keeping the momentum going here, Rob? A lot of new players, so their first opportunity to play in the British Basketball League. I know we're excited about it, and I think that, um, you know, it's time to, to show what you have, and I think looking at the teams now, you don't know much about them. We don't know much about Cheshire, so we'll find out tomorrow night, but always a time where uh, you need your players to step up on opening night. And how are they feeling? You know, what kind of insight can you give us ahead of the game? Yeah, they feel great. I think these uh, group I have this year has a lot of energy, and I think that uh, sometimes you have to slow them down a little bit, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's exciting times. I know our fans are pretty excited watching them play in the preseason so they're all looking forward to game one but coach rob 17 titles your appetite for titles i'm pretty sure it's not gone down you'll be looking for some some silverware this this year well i don't talk about that too much until the end of the season but um what we want to have is a team that's better at the end i think when you get a team in the beginning and you could take them all the way to the end and be better at the end you have a good chance to win silverware okay well one man of course that was with the london lions standing right here to my left they'll be playing this um the sorry scorchers this weekend ov what do you make of your your former team I mean, there's, there's been an uphaul over there as well. There's a lot of new guys over there. There's a new coach and staff, um, a new head coach, and he's going to want to put his imprint uh, onto the lines and onto that program. But it'll be interesting to see what he changes, what he doesn't change. Um, the consistencies and obviously with the new personnel, how we sort of adjust to those guys. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. To see how that goes. Zainu, I'm really keen to get your thoughts also on the London Lions. Of course, the MVP from last year that was Sam Decker. People are really going to rate him again this year. How much is he going to feature this season? I think uh, he's going to be a big part. You know, he is an MVP, um, a big caliber player, but they've put some lovely pieces mm -hmm. around him. They've got, you know, some talent, um, but kind of a bit of pressure on their back, Todd. Obviously, defending champions, they want to go uh, for some silverware along across the board, um, but they're also in the European uh, stint. So, right. you know, it's going to be a long season for them too. Do you think the London Lions are just as good as they last year? Have they just reloaded? Um, I think they had to reload because especially when right. you're going to Europe it is tough. It's a tough year. Um, also playing kind of back-to-back -back games. They're going to play in the um, British Basketball League and then be right on the road. That is very, very hard. They have to be uh, strong, but also in their bench. Scorchers Lions, part of a great lineup this weekend, Jeanette, all weekend long as the British Basketball League kicks off the season.
Absolutely. If you, if you haven't wet your appetite tonight, then I'm pretty sure you'll find something over the weekend to get your teeth stuck into, including the Manchester Giants against Gladiators. That finishes the, the, the weekend's games. And Coach Rob, what are your thoughts on that for Manchester Giants in particular? Giants, new team, new coach. So d not sure, so sure what to expect. Gladiators playing in Europe this year have put together a new team as well. A lot of expectations up there. Let's see what they can do on Sunday night. Yeah, and for yourself, Ovi, what you're making of Manchester Giants, there's quite a bit of external noise going on around that team at the moment. You hope it doesn't actually affect them. Yeah, there's a lot of change going on up there, and, and that's, uh, of course, going to bring a little bit of um, unsettling and, and going to take some time for the new guys to get acclimated over there. But I'm really impressed with the Gladiators last season, and I want to see, um, yeah, how they can continue to build onto what they started. Oh, well. Rob, Ovi, thank you very much. Lots of expectation of the 10 teams that make up the British Basketball League. Who will start their season off on the right foot? It's yet to be seen, but we've got all the coverage right, for, right here for you on the British Basketball League.